How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course After Chat. Hams helping hams across the world. How about now? How about now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Is this for the After Chat? It is indeed for the After Chat. But most of you are on Discord, so there you go. All right. <laughs> ah, my camera's off! There we go. And boom. Boom. There it is. There I am. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the After Chat. Let's dive right in to our friends that are on the Discord. If you'd like to join along, go ahead and uh, take the link in the description for the After Chat. And you can uh, join all the fun into the Discord. That is how one goes. Into the Discord. Oh. I got some audio problems. Hold on. Sorry, guys. Hello. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Five, nine in Huntsville, Texas. Ooh, buddy. That's a hot mic. Literally, it's a hot mic. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Hello, buddy, Jim. Fliberty Gibbets, indeed. All right, welcome to Hams Helping Hams. That's the new name I'm uh, I'm taking for. Uh, I don't know if I'm taking. Somebody's probably already used that a thousand times. By the way, nobody's come up with a new idea in Ham Radio. We're all just rehashing the old ones and putting new spins on it. Am I right, Mike? Nobody's come up with Ham Radio too. Are you kidding me? I wasn't pointing that at you. I was more pointing at the the many people who who have all used similar ideas within this space. It's Ham Radio. I have an idea, and it's YouTube. So if we blend the two together, it's Ham Radio Tube. I realized when, I realized when I said that, that yes, I was pointing at... I, I wasn't trying to point at Ham Radio Tube. That was not my point. I was talking about other things you and I know that, you know, have been rehashed retreads of things of the past. But that was... I, I love your new name. I, I have no, no offense on that. Oh, no, thank you. None taken. How many holes does a tube have? One hole. Tubes have one. See, I, I still, I still beg to differ because there's a there's there's one part of the tube, and then there's the other part of the tube. Right. So is that not two holes? They just if you drill a hole in an hole. inch thick sheet of steel, I, is it still a hole or is it a tube that goes through that has two holes? Is the is the issue the the di the the dimensions of the straw, the thickness of the straw? No, no, no. It doesn't matter if it's pl paper or plastic. Right, so it, so if it's a uh, if it's a four foot tall by one foot thick piece of steel, and you bore a hole through it, is it a hole or a tube that you've made? And don't yes. forget about inner tubes. Yes, exactly. So you have one hole. <laughs> All right, <laughs> welcome to the Have Radio Crash Course After Chat. Uh, we had a great a great discussion with Ward Silver, and hopefully, is he on? Do we have Ward? Nah, he uh, he signed off for dinner about ten minutes ago. Oh, did he really? Yeah, that's what he said in chat. Oh no! Okay, then shoot. I was getting everything turned over. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. Ward, thank you so much if you're watching this. Uh, I'll send him an email thanking him profusely for being on the show. I don't know if uh, he was able to get through. Oh, yeah, the troops are chatting. Yep, no problem. Yeah, he just emailed me. You gotta do this live, otherwise Josh will forget, and then it will never get done. Anybody have that problem with their brain? If you uh, if you say to yourself, "I gotta do that thing," and it's so easy and simple, I'll just I'll just do it, you know, tomorrow. Nope, never do that. You'll never get it done. Anyway, you'll so be this all is, the time. Uh, you'll you'll totally forget. I, I've already I live that life. That is my life. All right, so this is the after chat. This is Hams helping Hams, and the idea here is really uh, to just answer questions for people who are new in amateur radio. That is our purpose. That's what we're trying to do. So if you're watching this live for the first time, we want you to join us on the Discord. Link is in the description. You can also mention some things in the YouTube chat if you want. But we find it's the most helpful if we can hear your beautiful voice and ask you questions to go a little bit back and forth on how to answer some of this stuff. So... Is there anyone here for the first time 
that would like to say hi, just, you know, break the ice, uh, introduce themselves a bit, or ask a question, ask your ham radio question. That's what we're here for. We want to answer your questions. So anybody here for the first time, come now. Mm -hmm. On the Discord voice, if this is your first time, All right, so we got some people on in, uh, YouTube, so we'll get to you in a second. Uh, by the way, if you're new, you, like you just got set up, it takes about like five minutes for the uh, Discord to like acknowledge that you're a human being and that you can talk, and then you need to set a PTT button. We generally all use left control. Uh, you do that in your Discord settings because this is like a big group of people. We can't all be talking at once. Capiche? So go set a, a, a PTT button. All right, last call on Discord. We'll come back to you in a second. Anybody here for the first time that would like to say hi or ask a question? Come now. I'll say hi. No question. <laughs> Who was that? Uh, this is Bill, KJ4MXM, out of Georgia. Hey, Bill. Is this your first time on the Discord? Uh, yes, sir. Hey, thanks for uh, joining us out here. Appreciate it. All right, very good. We'll see. He's Bill's broken the ice for you. Now everybody that's waited. Yep. Who's next? Who wants to say hi or ask a question? Go I ahead. Can, um, my XYL wants to say hi. Mm. Let's do it. Uh, this is Becky, KK4SWI. Oh, it's a two ham household. Excellent. I love it. Thank you, Bill and Becky. All right. Do you have a question or anything, Bill, or, or you're good? Okay, never mind. Bill unkeyed. So I'm that's, good. How, that's how we know. Thank you very much. All right. Anybody else that would like to say hi or ask a question? Go ahead. Brian, KC2SGI. There it is. I knew it. Brian, go ahead. Just saying hi, watching the stream, hanging out. I, okay. That means we've got everybody's questions answered. That's amazing. I love it. We got two people, three people with no questions. All right. Who's next? Uh, anybody here for the first time would like to say hi or ask a question? Go ahead. I'd like yeah. to ask a question. So I saw K9EI Matt, and then we'll go to KB4T after him. So go ahead, Matt. Yeah, good evening, everybody. K9EI here, Matt. Um, first time on your stream, guys, and uh, thanks for letting me jump in here and uh, participate. Yeah. Uh, do you have a question or anything? Nope, I'm just kind of hanging out. I watched uh, Ward uh, and you talking earlier, so just thought I'd come over here to the... Uh, uh, the after chat session, see what's going on. Never I, been here. I appreciate that. War did have to hop up to her hop off to go eat dinner. Uh, he is two hours ahead of us. So he's, he's having a late dinner slash snack. So he might become back, but we, we don't know. But, uh, just want to say thanks to Ward again. All right. So KB4T, if you get right up on the mic, you were a little bit quiet. Go ahead. Well, I can, <clears throat> I can fix that problem, but, uh, my quick question is, how do I look at the chat that uh, allegedly exists here while we're talking? Allegedly. So if you go up to the top of the voice chat, um, it says live stream after chat, and there's a hashtag live dash stream. If you click on that, that is, the, that is the chat. It will combine the YouTube chat and the Discord chat into Juan. All righty, I'll take a look and see if I can make that happen. Thank you. All right, well, there we go. We've already got uh, one question answered successfully. Uh, anybody else, first time, like to say hi or ask a question? Go ahead. Hey, this is uh, this is Jamskin. That's not a first-timer. That's a many-timer. <laughs> this is a question. So my kid actually wants to know this question. Okay. Okay. Uh, I've got these Behringer um, headphones I picked up at like Musician's Friend, and they okay. look like the ones you're wearing, and he wants to know if they're the same ones. Uh, no. These are, uh, well, they're not Behringer. There's, these are Bear Dynamics DT77 Pro Limited Edition 32 ohms. Right on. I told him they were not the same, so I, I now I, I, get a, I get a win, so thank you. <laughs> You got to win to your kid. That's always a powerful thing. I, I appreciate that. Helping dads, helping dads. I appreciate Cheers to you, bud. <laughs> he, he just high fived me for some reason. Excellent. Take the high fives, man. You're not going to get a lot of those. How old is he? 
Jampy Jamp. How old's your son? We you say four? No, oh, I lost no. you. I can't hear you, man. What happened? Oh, I don't know. He's nine. Oh, not. Oh, he's the same age as Ben. Okay. Yeah. Right on. All right, Matt K seven UAP unidentified aerial phenomena got his extra today. They got their ham license, guys. The aliens got their ham license. He goes by Snow Cone on the Discord, but his uh, call sign is K seven UAP. So watch out for uh, UAPs in Seven Land. Right, right on, man. All right, uh, let's just open it up. Any questions, any comments on tonight's show or anything? Let's just explore the space. We got Matt, Mike here, so we know we're going to have a lot of fun. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, we lost. No, no, Mike's still here. So, okay, cool. Man, no questions, no anything? You want me to just fill the space? We're going to start screwing around with... Um... Where is it? There right. it is. The question. Oh. We're going to start playing around with the uh, Tiny SA Ultra right now, guys. And I, I wanted to do a size comparison on the SOG, uh, Tiny, the Tiny Pint or Small Pint, Mini Pint, whatever it is, uh, mini multi-tool thing that's available on Amazon because it's very cheap. Anyway, go ahead, question. Um, uh, Let's say uh, I want to learn CW and I'm interested in, like, learning on the computer. Um. Is there ways to interface like paddles and stuff to the computer uh, without necessarily having to be on the radio? Uh, why do you want to interface it to the computer? Just so I can practice without being on the radio. Could it be a standalone device that doesn't have to be a computer? Sure. Okay. Yeah, there's a, there's a multitude of uh, devices that will do standalone keying into and transmit. In fact, I'm gonna go grab the one I like uh, the most right now. If you give me a second, I will go do that and I'll show you on the uh, on the overhead here. So let me go do that. I'm still not able to uh, see any sort of chat that's going on in, the, uh, in Discord here. I can hear everything. Are you on a phone or a computer? I'm on All a right. confuser. <clears throat> I uh, I thought I did what uh, uh, Josh suggested, clicking on open chat, but there's nothing there of any consequence. The last thing that's there is dated 2022. All right, let me let me. I just heard part of the question there about the chat room. Uh, KB4T. So, are you on a phone or PC? I'm on a confuser. Okay. A genuine, honest to God, desktop confuser. So if you're on the left side of Discord, there's a list of chat rooms, kind of like what you'd see on IRC, if you remember those days. If you scroll down uh, a little bit past the halfway point, there will be something that says live dash stream. Do you see that? I do. Click on it. I did. Nothing seems to appear. Uh... Okay. Double click. All right, we'll do it another way. So I just pinged you at uh, KB4T. Do you see any chat room, if you scroll up or down, that has a red one next to it? Uh, click on that. Well, that's what I've been clicking on. The Now, I'm not sure. Maybe what I'm seeing is... Uh... Uh, peculiar. It sounds uh, like you're seeing something peculiar. Well, uh, it's got the right date. So apparently everything to the left says YouTube, which I thought would be odd. I don't know. what. Do you, do you see me that says hi, KB4T? Do you see me say that right now? Do you see that? I do not. There's something else going on then. You're on the wrong chat. You did see where I added you, though, and it gave you that red one? Yeah, I saw that, and I clicked on live stream. I double-clicked on it, and mm -hmm. it does not produce any sort of chat. I'm looking at dated September 2, 2023. Everything to the left says YouTube with, uh, I guess, comments of people from YouTube. Can you go full screen? You're in the wrong chat. You've got to be in the wrong chat. 
Well, and I don't want to take a lot of time here, but uh, I, I doubt it's that important. But I just thought it would be something simple I could do. But the only thing that uh, shows an after chat is um, live stream slash after chat with a couple Oh, of okay. I know why. Okay. So you, do you see uh, with a little green light that with a speaker that says live stream after chat? Do you see that? I do, yes. Do you see a little arrow next to the green light to the left? If it's not pointed down, you need to make it point down. Click it. It's been pointed down all this time. And well, then still... the one right under it is live dash stream, and that's what everybody else is on, and we're all chatting at you right now. So there's something else going on. Josh, you oh, wait, you're typing. Top. It says you're typing. Keep you typing. at the top and needs to scroll down to the bottom. Oh, scroll down to the bottom, man. Scroll down. There's a there's probably a button that says scroll to bottom at the lower right hand side. By golly, he's got it. Oh, he's got it. We got it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so I wish, the, I wish the scroll bars on the right side were a little more visible, but I We got them. We got them. So if you're all belaboring this, so we're we're here, right? Here's the live stream. Uh, let me get my Why am I so big? Jeez. Uh, live dash stream right there. That's a good we're one. At. And there you go. We're scrolling. See how they get that little red line that says new? That's that's like new stuff as it's coming up. So anyway, it's, it's definitely working now. Thank you so much. Beautiful. It. It's a beautiful thing. We got and as long going. as I have your ear for a moment. Um, go for it. I uh, you and I spoke uh, here a few weeks back. Uh, about possibly doing a program on uh, interference investigation. Yes, sir. Yes. And uh, I think you said you were going to reach out to me, but that never happened. And so I was going to ask you, what is the best way to reach out to you? Honestly, we can. Uh, so did we do a uh, a DM? We did, right? Did I send you a uh, message? Negative, we have not. Oh, yeah, I did. So, uh Okay, uh, I'll, I'll send it again. Hi, let's chat here for the show. There you go. I sent it'll be on your upper left corner. That's a DM, a direct message I sent you. It uh, popped up, and I, <laughs> I guess the problem is I don't live in Discord. Uh, okay, well, what do you prefer then? You can email me here. I'll, I'll send you here. This is what we'll do. Uh, there you go. I'm going to send you an email. And let's continue the conversation there. And uh, let's, yeah, let's talk. Let's talk over email. We probably have to go back, back and forth a couple of times. I got that, and I will do so. Thank you so much. Cheers, man. Appreciate you uh, working through that. Excellent. All right. So let's go back to the question on if I wanted to learn the C dubs and I wanted a device. So yes, you can, of course, uh, go get software for your computer. You you can totally do that, and. The question becomes, how do you handle keying into a computer? There is some difficulties with latency and other things like that, particularly if you're just doing practicing. Practicing. A lot of ham radios have modes where you just don't transmit when you're keying, and you can practice along those lines. However, there are devices like this. This is the Spark Gap Labs MCT73. I'll show you this really quickly and and hopefully this will give you an idea of what you could do uh anyway so this is what we use on the podcast when i when i make leia do morse code this is the device she has to mess with so you have let's see can you see that is there any spot you can see this all right it's a little blown out but trust me you can see it just fine so training modes you can go through the Koch method she's still just figuring out r and if you select it, so it makes you, it'll play. You can make it louder too. But uh, basically what it's going to do is it's going to play out key different characters based off of where you're at in the Koch method. But if you wanted to do the other side of it, so... Long press this back. Let's go to. We're going to go to transmit training. Okay. 
So now I just take any key. In this case, I'll take my delicious Bagali Traveler in orange. And I'll plug it into the keyer section. So yeah, it functions as a keyer as well. So now with this connected, I can just do... Oh, see, that's too fast for me. I'm going too fast. I think I'm doing it right. This may be the machine. Hold on. Oh, you can't even see it. Hold on. Hold on. There we go. So... I think it's getting muted, Josh. Yeah, it is. Well, it's also not very loud. I have it set to quiet because we go uh, we go out of the speaker port into the podcast booth, so I can't blow out the speakers on this one. But anyway, so yeah, it'll it, you can practice keying with this. And there Josh, you go. I don't, Josh, I don't want to do a sidebar, but what key is that? Uh, that's the Bagali Traveler. The Ferrari Bagali. Oh, it does. Does it come with those actual the the mounts on the side? Everything that's it. That is how it is. Yeah, but it's uh, good luck finding them in orange. Good luck finding them. Period. Like I swear, I haven't even seen them at the Hampus. Oh, they're Bagali Travelers. The most probably one of their most sold keys. I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, there you go. There's that. And oh, buddy, did somebody say Jimmy Buffett? Man. Shout out or pour one out for Jimmy Buffett. Dude was like 76 years old, which I, I, I want to say like, that's like my, the age of my dad. That, that's hitting a little close to home, man. So, yeah. Rest in peace, Jimmy Buffett. Don't. Okay, we're good. Never mind. Turning itself off. It also has a battery save function, which is nice. Okay. Uh, there you go. Anybody in the chat who has a question? This is wide open now. Anybody that wants to talk, chat, question, anything, go ahead. Hey, Josh. Is... I have a... Sorry. That's all right. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to mention real quick that there's also the uh, the V-band um, device, which is like a USB to serial. Yeah. Or not uh, USB device for your um, CW training, and they have like a little sort of like CW chat room where it's just Morse code and people can get onto a channel and then you can talk to each other uh, through using V-Band. Yes, that is a fantastic point. Uh, let me actually find where I did a live stream on that. We built that device live and then worked contacts. Um, had some That's cool. I think it got yeah, a I bit. I bought one, and it, it sometimes it works for people, sometimes it doesn't. It, there was a lot of latency on my computer, um, so you would be sending dits and dahs, and it would take a long time for them to come out or whatever. So it, you know, I'm not exactly sure how to get around that, but I think there's other devices out there too that might be a little bit better, like the CW Hotline product that they sell too. That's what I. That's have, what I. Is CW Hotline? That's what we did a, a live stream on with CW Hotline. Yeah, comment. Go ahead. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, things on instructables on how to build a uh, on how to build a code practice device. Somebody gave me a uh, a uh, Pixie uh, QRP, you know, build your own kit that they got from uh, China. That just it just squalled. It just as soon as you plug it in, it started transmitting. So I put a 50 ohm uh, resistor on there and uh, uh, made sure that it didn't transmit nothing uh, with my SDR. And I use that for practicing. Still don't know how to do code yet, but I'm still practicing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, God, it, it feels like 
It feels like when you're a kid, and you know that one kid who just like wouldn't get off the training wheels? That's what a lot of these <laughs> tools feel like a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. I hate to say that. I hate to say it because they do have a point, and a lot of them are really, really good, so I'm not taking anything away from them. But it kind of feels like that a little bit, right? And and I, I think that's why a lot of clubs like um, Long Island CW Club and others exist is so that you can just – let's. You know, let, let's get you to making contacts as fast as we can, because if you're just doing it on your own, um, you're it, it's going to be a, a harder row. Sorry, road. I don't want to say it wrong. It's road to hoe. That's where, we, uh, you know, difficulty there. I'd say the best tool is just uh, sorry. Um, I'd say the best tool is just get on the air. Yeah, because you'll you'll mess up and then you'll you'll realize you messed up and then you'll learn really quickly. Yeah. And and speaking of get on the air, I heard uh, one Mike <laughs> N8YO. Go ahead, man. <laughs> Evening, Josh. Good to be uh, good to be on Saturday. It's one of the rare times based uh, uh, due to Labor Day weekend. I'm actually yeah, man. I'm glad Saturday to hear night. you, bud. Uh, Saturdays are always busy for me, but uh, I actually spent the last. Uh, what I was going to say is I spent the last two nights camping uh, with my girlfriend and her son. And of course, if I'm camping, there's radio in the park, so I did Poda, and. I did, actually did a little bit of side ban, but most of it was TW, yeah. of course, especially with the contest yesterday. Sure. But uh, I had somebody come back to me. You know, I usually CQ operated about 20 words a minute. That's the sweet spot. Most photo operators are operating there. Yeah. Uh, somebody came back to me. I swear it had to be 8, 10 words. It was 10 words a minute max. Mm -hmm. And I I just bumped my gear speed down. It was, you, you know, I have to make the adjustment. But, you know, like somebody had the guts to get on the air and he sent great code at 10 words a minute or whatever it was. Uh, we will, I mean, most of us uh, do that. I, T.O. says it all the time. But, I mean, like if you, if you really want to practice it, just like get over, you know, the key fright. Just just get on the air and activate a or, or work a work somebody doing a pota, yeah. Because uh, all you need to send is five nine nine, and if you want, you can send your state if you happen mm -hmm. to know those letters. If not, just send five nine nine. Yeah, and your call. That's I, all we need. I love that, Mike. Um, and and Steve of of course is right. So if the concern is key fright and you literally are petrified when you get behind the key, then chasing a pota is about as simple as it can get because it's literally just five you send five five n five five n k <laughs> like if if you're totally bad at it and believe me i did this so it's did it 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 did it 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 dot it <laughs> that's it and then k da 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 that's that's what you send along with your call sign and as long as they're replying back to you with the call sign so you have to copy that um, you've you've technically just made a contact on Poda. If you want to log their contact, then yeah, you have to decipher all that stuff. So, and also, have a, have also, what great what greater play. motivation is there than actually having completed a Morse contact? You're only going to want to oh, get better at that point. Yeah, and and the fright level starts to go down and down and down and down and down. Now, don't worry. When you go to make a QSO like a proper let's let's chew the fat a little bit, talk about the weather, talk about your station, that kind of thing. Your fright will level will go back up, but you've now become accustomed to it a bit baby steps baby steps baby steps that's it yeah i i, I second that using the uh poda hunting as a mode to go and uh, it just works great uh you know what uh aa zero z's in there if you want to join us on the discord you're welcome but i figured you know that you know what i'm starting to feel that the farnsworth spacing is one of the biggest crutches that i got myself wrapped around the axles on to be honest i i think the spacing actually prevented me from just getting over like hearing the the characters in the spacing that they should be and then when i didn't hear hear them that way it actually led to me like a cognitive dissonance about like just copying what you're hearing and just doing it just do it stop being lazy and just doing it so i kept falling back to i want more farnsworth can i have more farnsworth please and instead of just doing the thing right i, I hate yeah it's 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 training well, wheels it really is i mean, it, you're right it, uh, honestly I? But the best way to learn straight key um but like even to this day i've been i've been doing cw for a long time and i still get thrown off whenever anyone's using a bug the timing complete sure the dots are, the dots are perfect and the dashes are all over the place and it throws uh, yeah, the hell yeah, off yeah. yeah i 
okay. I mean, most of the time, if you're under 20 words a minute, you're doing a poda or something like that, you can make a go at it. It's not that big a deal. So, you know, we're we're getting in the weeds a little bit. Hey, stay tuned to Mondays for Kyle, AA0Z's live streams, when it's the CW Roundtable. I'm not kidding when I say this. If you literally look up AA0Z, he has a show that he does every week on Mondays that breaks down some of these crazy little detailed niche things about getting people on Morse code. And I love it. I love it whenever I can tune into it. So make sure you check that out. I will second that because even though I'm not in the Morse code that much, his streams are always super informative oh, about CW. They're great. they're great. I love it. I love it. I'm I'm throwing no shade at the people who just get together and wing it on ham radio, but I really like the fact that he brings people together and then has a really cogent topic that they work through. Very valuable. Extremely valuable. So there you go. Oh, absolutely. Go check out AA0Z. In fact, I'll I'll go a step further and I'll 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 get his I'll do the work for him since he's not posting his own channel. I believe he is he should be a mod. But it's okay. I'll do it for him. <laughs> there there's uh, AA0Z. Kyle AA0Z. The man, the myth, the legend. Let's see. There it is. Oh, I'm lo- sorry. I have <laughs> I have analytics displayed. My bad. <laughs> And let me just close that for a second. There we go. <laughs> go check out his live streams. Good stuff. See all this stuff, all the CW. I love it. I love all. I love all this. I, all the stuff he does. Look at all this. Commitment to getting people onto Morse code. Love it. Oh, he's on the road. No excuse. He's on the road to get more sun uh, sun drop, isn't he? He realized that that uh, that local stuff they're brewing isn't as good as the Huntsville stuff. So now he's he's off and trying to snag some more of the, the dirty illegal stuff. Mm. All right. There we go. All right. Who's next? Questions, comments. Questions, comments. Keep them going. Keep them- Josh, I have a quick question about the uh, watt meter on your desk. Is that the one that's in your Amazon store? It's about half the price of a PowerWorks. Are you happy with it? The watt meter that's on my desk. What do you mean? Right next to your Spark Labs. Oh, this guy. That one? You're talking about the power poles one? Oh, is that a is that a PowerWorks? No, it's yeah. uh, it's just one of the cheap ones that's off Amazon for plugging batteries into. It just tests battery draw. It's not for uh the antenna side. Are you talking about? No, uh, I, I understand what it is, but it's not a PowerWorks, and PowerWorks is the best, and it, that thing's about half the price. So, is it? Are you, you're happy with it? Yeah, yeah, I'm happy with it. Cool. To to imply that PowerWorks the same factory. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. To imply that PowerWorks does some kind of something special uh, that makes it more accurate than the other one, I, I, the, the jury's out on that one. You'd have to prove that to me. They don't. That's the fun thing. Right. Uh, somebody asked where I got this shirt from earlier. This is a skateboarding company in Germany, and somebody bought this shirt, and they shipped it to me from Germany. So now I have the radio shirt, skateboard shirt. That's I, I saw that shirt tonight, and I was like, man, I got to get one of those. So you should Good put the link up. Good luck. I don't know where he got it. I don't have a link. If you look up uh, it's radio skateboard company, there you go. That's probably the best way to find it. Hmm. So I would love to talk more about CW. In fact, I, I, I'm going to come back to this. But um, I've got a couple of YouTubers in the house I want to say hi to because I know we're kind of already off the, the rails somewhat here. So let's start out with uh, with our friend, Digital Rancher. He's in the house. What's up, man? How you doing? Hey, Josh. Uh, thanks for the uh, shout out there. Hey, we just wanted to say um, loved uh, watching Ward on the stream. Uh, you know, I think he's a... Uh, He's a ham radio national treasure. Mm-hmm. So just love that guy. Uh, indeed. And he's a, he's a blast to uh, to chat with just uh, when you do a live stream. He's, he's fantastic. You can just chat with him for the entire time. It's great. It's super easy to interview. So, but what have you been up to, man? Well, I've uh, just been trying to survive the Texas heat here. Not uh, not too much else going on. I've got um, uh, a video I'm putting together. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions recently about my uh, my satellite pack. 
So I uh, just do a quick video to break down everything that's in that satellite pack. Hopefully that answers all the questions that uh, I'm getting from folks in uh, email and in uh, video comments. So it seems to be something folks are interested in. So you got to give the people what they want. I, I agree, particularly. So um, Digital Rancher here is one of my biggest pieces of YouTube advice I can give you. If someone is, if you hear from lots of people that they want you to do more of what you already like doing, do that. <laughs> it's it's when they start asking you to do things you don't like doing that you should question. But if you love doing it, then give them what you already love doing. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think that's great advice. It's, uh, I mean, that's that's the easy stuff too, right? right. That's um, well, you're passionate yeah. about it. It makes doing it that much easier, and you're always you always feel uh, like you're on a mission to do it and do the best job at it because you care enough about it that you don't want like anything uh, that would be inaccurate coming out of your mouth, particularly because you care so much about it. That's that's really what that does. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, the other thing too, right, as a, as a fairly new YouTuber, right, is, um, you know, I still have that, uh, that fear that everything is, uh, forever more, uh, memorialized on the internet. Right. So, uh, you better get it right. Yeah. I mean, it, it, that is true. I don't know where this, anyway, uh, it, it that is true. So you, you, you should try to do your best to get it right the first time. Because making another video kind of sucks. But then at the same time, if what you were wrong on is kind of an incidental part of it, or it just makes your uh, a follow-on video even better, then that's actually great. So when, um, when I got on the phone with Ed Fong, like literally accidentally got on the phone with Ed Fong, and he was talking to me about my video and critiquing it and said, hey, did you do it this way? Because you probably should have done it this way. And I'm like, oh, shoot. You're right. I should go reshoot the whole thing the way he said I should to make it even more accurate. It doesn't invalidate what I did before. That just becomes a different data point. But now I got like a new, you know, a new a new point that I can build upon, which I was super excited about. So I'll be doing an Ed Fong version of the J-Poll video here in the future. Yeah, well, and when you have an SME like Ed Fong, right, giving you advice, uh, right, right, you're wise to think it. And yeah, yeah. I, I thought that was hilarious how you uh, kind of dumbed upon talking to him. Uh, yeah. th 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 that was just uh, kismet. That, that was awesome. And his name's Edison. His his first name is Edison. It's Edison Fong. And I was like, there's an Edison Fong calling me. What are the odds? And sure enough, it was that Edison. It was it was so that trip was so fun. That will go down in in my life as one of my favorite uh, trips that we've done to San Francisco. Beautiful. For all the naysaying I did, Leia was right. Begrudgingly, I have to say that. So, well, thank you, Digital Rancher, for being out here. I appreciate it, man. Hey, you bet. Thanks. Uh, thanks for giving me a few minutes. Appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, feel free to drop your channel in the chat, and I'll I'll boost it up there if it goes over to YouTube. All right, what's up with Ham Radio for non-techies? Go ahead. Hey, Josh, how you doing tonight? Good. How good. you been, man? Oh, doing pretty good. A great topic tonight. Uh, you can really get on a lot of rabbit holes with just uh, talking about propagation. Oh, I went ahead like and bought his book. And... Sorry? I was going to say, uh, propagation is almost like grounding. It, yes. it, it is its own like deep mysticies. You have to put on the hooded robes and carry torches when you walk around. <laughs> yeah, I went ahead and bought his book. It'll be here tomorrow, so I'll start reading that, and hopefully, I won't have to interpret it into English to understand it. But uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. It should be good. Yeah, I heard hmm. there's a legend that's told around campfires at ham fests that if Don is not in your live stream after chat, you hold a candle in front of a mirror and say his call sign three times, he'll appear. Is that true? Should I go get a candle? <laughs> I don't know what to do with Don not here. Yeah, well, it's he, kind of he weird, also, isn't it? He also showed up a little bit later last week, too. So he, he's yeah. been busy. You know, he's got other things. Well, it's it's also like a... Uh, I don't know. Is this a named POTA event weekend, or is this just because it's Labor Day? Everybody's out doing POTA. I think. I don't know. I know Mike would tell me if that's the case, but... It's just, it's just a good weekend. It's just Labor Day, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the bands are lousy though. Uh, huh. they're okay. I I did all right. Well, twenty was up and down yesterday, big time. It was just you know hit or miss. 
Okay. 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 But, uh, we had one little issue on 40 during the CW Ops event, but it seemed pretty good uh, yeah. for the other two sessions. But uh, yeah, the bands are always open, though, when you get on them. So what else is going on? Well, I finally uh, yeah. sat down and, and, and weathered the horrible heat here in Houston and uh, shot try. a video of me installing my 400 into my new truck. So I'll be looking for that what? next week. Uh, it took about nine takes because I had to keep stopping the camera to oh, wipe all sweat off my brow. To do it but, right uh, now. Who is that? Mike K5, KR5NEO, Hot Mike. Hot Mike, Mike. Hot Mike, Mike. Mute yourself. Or I'll do it for you. No. <laughs> go get go ahead, Henry for not deckies. No, I just uh I, I finally shot the video. Uh, it took a little while, like I said, to keep stopping the camera to dry off, let the camera cool down and fire back up again. Uh but that'll be uh pretty cool getting getting to show you guys that install. Um some of the stuff I had to do a little ahead of time is just it, it, running the wires through my truck. Apparently at Toyota. They have a guy whose secondary job is a samurai sword sharpener. Because I was pulling the wires to the firewall up underneath the dash, I ran my finger across the sharpest piece of metal ever and ripped my finger open. So that was a lot of fun. How bad did you have to get stitches? Oh, well, was, I just had to go put a bandaid up. There's a lot of bleeding and cussing ensued. So, oh, yeah. So typical <laughs> car, <laughs> typical Japanese car work is what you're saying. Is hey, Scott. Yes. Yeah. Don't do that. Stop. Yeah, well, that that was that wasn't it. the intention. Stop that. <laughs> yeah, stop. <laughs> Though swearing does make it heal faster. It does. Yes, it does. Yeah, it, yeah. it definitely helps stop the bleeding yeah. a little bit. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'll be getting that rocking and rolling next week, and uh, got some more. I got a whole whiteboard now. I've been sitting down and writing down some stuff based on what some of the viewers have asked about, and uh, they give me some really cool ideas for things. So as, as I research things, more videos will be coming out for that. Excellent. Well, yep. thanks for stopping by and hanging out. And if you want to share your knowledge with everybody for hams helping hams, feel free to do so. Absolutely. I, thanks for having me. Thank you. I got a comment from KC3WRK. I'm stopping by to say hi. Took the test last Saturday and got my license this week. Been a positive experience so far. In and out. Well, there you go. Thanks so much. Appreciate that. Uh, we got a couple of questions. Don't worry. I see them. If you at Ham Radio Crash Course. Or put question in your question. I'll see it on the YouTubes and the Discord. And so that's a way to have them bubble up to the top to the fastest way possible. But first, we want to get done saying hi to all of our YouTube friends. And I think the last one up is one Mike K8MRD. How's it going? It's a uh, ham radio tube. That's right. Put some respect <laughs> on the name. Put some respect on the name when you're talking to me. Show Dick some respect. <laughs> nah, we'll, we'll always know you as K Murder. Oh, there he is. Oh, there, yeah. he is. there he is. Hey. Hey. Well, just some, somebody did the mirror trick at work. Don, somebody did. Don, Don, we, Don, we spent like Someone three said, minutes summoning you earlier. Oh, sorry. No, I, I have a family thing going on. I had to take the take the call. Yeah. Hey, well, hey. I'm waiting for you. Mike to key up. That's right. <laughs> so what's been going on, man? What have you been up to? Uh, dude, I, oh my God. So uh, obviously it's, we were texting earlier, but yeah, dude, we, we left. Um, so hi everybody. My name's Mike K at MRD. I have a YouTube channel called ham radio tube. Hi Mike. Uh, so my friend, uh, Ryan KF8 IV, uh, and I left my house at seven o'clock this morning to do a major, major POTA activation. He's like, I don't have Louisiana in the log as a hunter. He's got every state, Alaska, wow. Hawaii, D.C., everything. Didn't him. have Louisiana. So he's like, you know what? Let's just go to Louisiana and activate. So he drove up to my house. He left his house probably. He lives an hour from me. So he left his house probably 6 this morning. Got to my house 7 this morning. We left. We drove almost three hours east of my house in Huntsville, Texas, northeast to uh louisiana mm -hmm. and we did a poda there okay and then we're like well we're we're so as as we're driving there like the whole the, the whole idea of today was to just let's just go to louisiana and do a poda right but then we get there and we're like well we're here in louisiana so let's activate another park so 
we activated another park. And kind of on the way that we were there, we're like, well, let's see how many parks we can do. Because okay. last uh, last December, December 23rd, it was actually, of last year, he and I did, we tried to do a five-park Poda Rove. Oh, okay. We had, we had a couple, we had a hiccup. Well, one, we stopped at a gun store for like an hour, so that killed time. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> when in Texas... So we didn't actually get stuff. five parks. We didn't get five parks before the new Zulu day. So today, as the, as we drove out there, or this morning as we drove out there, I'm like, well, what if what if we do this park? Yeah. And on the way there or on the way back, however you want to do it, we pass a couple parks. So like, all right, so we're gonna we're gonna do like just a big poet a day. So long story short, so we are. I am absolutely exhausted. I'm. Like I'm gonna be seeing him talking. Like I'm, we're, I'm just, I'm done. We drove from Huntsville, Texas, to somewhere in Louisiana. I mean, just across the border. Mm -hmm. And then we're like, all right, let's go back into Texas, and we'll get Martin Dyes Junior State Park, which doesn't mean anything to anybody. But we're like, well, wait a minute. There's a, there's another, there's a wildlife management area that's like 25 minutes south of where we're Oh, it's, it's one of those. So, it's, you Billy Mazed yourself into six parks, dude, is what you're saying. Dude. So, yes. <laughs> yes. But so wait, we're like, we're, there's more. We're in Louisiana. So, like, as we're going out there, we're like, oh, I love it. all right, we can, we can do this and then we can do this. And we're thinking like four parks, right? Mm -hmm. This whole day, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, we're going to have a couple ginger ales on the way. Not not condoning that, but that's what you do. Okay. Uh, sure. Sure. So we're in Louisiana. We get to the park at like ten o'clock this morning. The, the like the the park that we're going to Louisiana. We activate it. I had some troubles, so we ended up using one radio. We were going to do two. We had band pass filters and all that crap, but who cares? So we we work the first park. We get it activated. I got like twenty two contacts in like nine minutes. No big deal, right? So we leave there. And, and the band condition sucked today. It was bad. Okay. So we go to this wildlife management area in Louisiana. So we ended up working two parks in Louisiana. And I filmed all this. So somehow I'm going to cut a video of this. Um, so two parks in Louisiana. Then we go back to Texas, work some parks. And uh, we're so we're like in the truck. The band conditions, I mean, there's a geomagnetic storm or something. Like, band conditions suck balls today. But we're like, if we're going to do this, we need to just use the Tar Heel on the truck. Oh, which just is go. usually a good yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. And, and we have a six-foot whip a on whip. the Tar Heel. A whip. We were at the first One spot. Whip. We were using full-length, 40-meter, pac and NFED half-wave, 66 feet of wire, blah, blah, blah. We're, I mean, we're getting out no problem. Then we get to the Tar Heel, and it's like, uh, like oh. it's taken. It's Wait, the it hamstick 30... was killing it. The hamstick was killing it. No, no, no. no. The Pac Tenna. Oh, the, the Pac Tenna. Sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah, I the Enfet Halfway was it's killing it. I mean, I say killing sure. it. I mean, air quotes, air quotes. Right. It was not. It's not a good day for ham radio. So we get to the we get to the wildlife management area, the second park, and we're just like, we, we're going to go in and out. So we just use the Tar Heel which we have the six foot whip. And generally when you put that six foot whip on the Tar Heel, right. you're going to get out. Like it works. Okay. Dude, it, it took us a half an hour calling CQ at that park. We got eight contacts and then we ended up just working each other on VHF and UHF on our HTs just to get it activated. Cause we're, I mean, we're in a time crunch, right? Right. Uh, so then we go, we go. We get back to Texas. We get to Lake Livings. No, where the hell did we go? We went to Martin Dyes State Park. Some RFI at the first place we stopped at. So we went across the street. Got another. We got two contacts originally where we started. Then we went across the street, which is like two miles away. Still in the park. Mm -hmm. Finished the pota there. Um, and then we just we just kept going. So, but like from seven o'clock this morning. Leaving my house at seven o'clock this morning until we finally finished uh, at like five fifty-two this evening, Central Time. So wow, eleven hours, eleven hours we were doing Poda, and about an hour of that was actually playing on the radio. The other ten hours were just driving. It was we are exhausted. So, but we made it happen. We we did six parks. 
in two states in one Zulu day, and that's pretty good. And then we had it, and then we had a steak dinner that was horrible. So, <laughs> so that's my story. There you go. Good. Well, I'm glad you joined us. Uh, appreciate the uh, hard work you did for the potas. There is a ton of people doing the potas. I just danced around on the VFO and I found just a ton of people activating. So it was a big. Oh yeah, day. like the the spotting page was just loaded. Oh yeah, but the bands because like we're in we're like legit for the last two days. I've been reading about this geomagnetic storm or something that's that's hitting us right now. And I was telling Ryan at like seven oh one when we left. I'm like. Uh, I brought my USB cable because we might need to do FT8 because the bands are going to suck today. Right. But we ended up making it happen. So the, like we, we muscled through it. We did it. We called CQ. It was all on phone. Um, some, uh, some contacts didn't get us both. It is what it is. But we, we went out there. We muscled through it. We played POTA. And we had, I mean, we had, Dude, at the end of the day, we were like, we could literally could just fall down exhausted at the end of the at, at the park, but we accomplished our goal, and it was it was such a great feeling. It was such that's, a great day. I mean, that's I I like, and and I'm not uh, when I say this, I'm taking nothing away from parks in the air. The the multi park cram it all into one day feels a lot like when you do a, a summits on the air with a particularly difficult summit. Sure, like, that's what it feels like to sure. me. Um, and, well, and in Texas, right? Everything is far away. We had to drive. Right. It took us yeah. almost three hours I love just that. to get to Louisiana. Yeah. But if I want other than Sam Houston National Forest mm -hmm. and Huntsville State Park, right? The next closest park to me is either forty-five minutes south or an hour and ten minutes north. Like it's they're far. Like mm -hmm. doing a doing a rove or like a multi-park activation in Texas, right? Is just it's freaking it's a it's hard. It's a it's hard because it's a long day of driving mm -hmm. because nothing is close. So I second that. So, so what I'm hearing is is Mike misses where he used to live, where there were twenty posts no, half no, an hour. I don't think he does. I don't think he does. I, I, Mike, I, Josh, Mike, Josh, you have I was misconstrued the message. No, I know, I know. I'm, I'm just giving you a hard time because I activated one of Mike's old parts the past few days. So yes. uh, Mike is, uh, as a kid, was a big fan of Double Dare, and he has accepted the physical challenge. Is what he's done here, dude. We we didn't even have slime though. That thing, like, there was no, there were no flags to grab. He knew. I mean, oh, he got were, it. He got were, it. Ah, oh, he got it. He got there it. There were. I mean, Mark Summers, of course. Mark Summers, who had uh, he who had crippling OCD, but because that was his job, he did double yeah. there. A oh, beautiful, beautiful. I mean, Josh, mm. I'm, I'm. You don't forget. I'm like two years older than you so yeah i always feel course. you're younger than me you you are more youthful than i am i feel oh, so. well it's because i'm not married i think that's also what it is or it doesn't have kids <laughs> that you know yeah. about at least right hey now i don't have any kids that i know about so right. there is that but, yeah, i think it's so. the kids it's not the wife the wife was actually leia is actually crazier than i was but once she once she got kids that was she's changed she's not Josh, the same anymore around yeah, okay. you gotta change her. You gotta <laughs> change her. But yeah, so I like so. Josh texted me. He, he texted me some random thing earlier, like three or four hours. That was the ago. cheeses. It was the cheeses it, comment. The cheeses thing. Yeah. Jesus. I was like, what the hell is this? And I, I don't have Instagram, so well, like, I don't said, have any of that. You gave me the whole Jesus cheeses thing that I was just like, what the hell is like, this? I and then when I saw somebody got... who did it, I was like, oh my god, this is Mike right here. When I clicked on the link, I got like ninety percent of it, but I could never it would never play the very beginning. Oh, it. okay, like, okay. You can't rewind it or anything. So I'm like, I don't have Instagram, I don't have Facebook, I, I hate all that crap. So uh but yeah, so uh dude, we were already beat by then. And that was yeah. That was probably probably about six thirty, maybe ish. I don't know. Anyway, who cares? Yeah. So, but yeah. So I, I, I want. I mean, I always love coming out here on the. On the oh, thank you. And if here, you but... can't, if you can't hang, I, I understand. I, I get it. You're tired. Um, but I, um, I have a Founders All Day IPA, so I'm, I'm rehydrating. I'm gonna stick around for a bit, but uh, I, I will most likely just. I'm just gonna say it right now. I'm gonna do the Irish goodbye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I understand. I'll just, I'll just, I will be here, and then I won't. 
I did. If there's uh, something, uh, if there's something of antenna related, I'll. I'll yeah, I'll, if everybody I'll would like to keep. Hi, man. <laughs> here's the secret to keep Mike on the after chat as long as possible: is ask antenna questions, particularly portable antenna questions. If you ask more of those, he'll stay here for potentially nine hours. We don't really know what the upper limit is. No. Um, with that said, I, I was telling my wife. Uh, that that Jesus, I, sh I showed her the Jesus, Jesus thing. She was like, oh, my gosh. And I was like, I sent it to Mike. I'm like, hey, by the way, do you know what uh, I have set to oh. Mike's, like, iPhone image when I text him or, or when I get a call from him? And she's like, no, what is it? And, uh, and, I, and I, showed her, I showed her this. Where's So speaking of that, let me clarify. That, that, is, I, uh, I that I didn't... is off of one of Mike's videos. Uh, that's the parking garage one I was referring to yeah, earlier. That, that's, 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 yep. Mike's, that's Mike's image. That's what I, I love use. love that video. It's I one of my favorite video. Mike videos. It's the best. It's the best. <laughs> Hold on. I, I'm, I'm going to dig it up, and I'm going to link it. Yeah, it's fantastic. So, Go ahead. Let me let me explain Jesus Cheeses. So I I came up with this, and I'm sure I'm not the only one to think sure. of this, but I came up with this on my own, let's say, two years ago. So I'm thinking, so like, you know, if you stub your toe, you're like, Jesus Christ, or whatever. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, you know, whatever. So I'm like, well, what if Jesus owned a cheese shop? Called it Jesus Cheeses. Jesus. What Jesus. if we use that instead of saying like Jesus Christ or Jesus or because then, then, it, it, then it's technically not blasphemy either. You're just talking about an establishment that Jesus may or may not. Well, have. can can I finish? Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm leading the witness. So instead of saying Jesus Christ and being blasphemous, which you all know I don't care about that because right. my cat's name is Satan. Right. But what if we just say Jesus Cheeses? But then you got to put a little of femininity in it and go, Jesus cheeses. Well, just, yeah. like, just like if you just if you get if you get angry because you're you're not going to blaspheme if you do this, and you just say Jesus cheeses, you know, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, but I am Jesus. Or if you're religious and you sell cheese, you could just call it Jesus cheeses. Okay, so, so that's, that's Carl, how I came up with it. Jesus Carl, cheeses. Uh, Mike, check this out. Carl A E zero V S just said communion wafers are Jesus. Uh, Jesus flavored. Uh, Jesus. We could go with that. Communion Jesus. wafers are Jesus. They're Jesus. If you say it, Jesus. Jesus. Y'all come down for communion. It's time for some Jesus. It's get the Jesus. If you say it like that. Yeah, I, I like Jesus. We could do that. I think I'm it's sure. time to switch the topic. A little bit, yeah, yeah. yeah. We we can switch. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I I'm I'm a fairly new ham operator, and I've used, mostly operated in UHF VHF because of antenna sizes. So I'm kind of curious. And the guy, you're saying there's a guy out here that you can keep here forever if you talk about antennas. So <laughs> portable I'd, antenna I'd, specifically. I'd, so I'd, you I'd have a question? Portable, Go ahead. Yeah, well, Go ahead. Because I have, a, I have a small yard, right? I don't have like like tons of space. So he was mentioning something about a, a whip on a some kind of a tail. Th what do you, what was that you were talking about? I, I didn't understand the terminology. It was on the back of a truck or something. What do you call that? What did uh, you say? Tar heel. He said tar heel. Yeah. What is that? Oh, okay. So um, let's 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 zoom out a bit. And let's just call it a screwdriver antenna. Ah, okay. oh, yes. I know what that is. Okay. So that's a like brand name. Wolf River Coils. Like, so generically, screwdriver antenna. A Wolf River Coils is a screwdriver antenna. Tarheel, an Atos, a uh, Scorpion. What's, what's the new one that everyone's uh, in the UK? Uh, oh, I don't gosh, know. What the heck? There's a new one that, like, if any mm -hmm. like new YouTube videos from the UK or VK land, it's it's a coil of wire around a like a piece of pipe, right? And then you you raise or lower this coil, this collar that adds inductance it, to make it resonate. It's a it's a shorting uh, inductor. It's a shorting inductor yeah. antenna is basically what it is. It, it yeah. So so I mean, a tar heel is is just a brand of an antenna that does that electronically oh, okay. and it motorized if you will for oh. uh it's its main market is like let's put this on your car and while you're driving down the street 
you can uh, use a controller that's inside your car and you could push a button and it will man it will automatically mechanically raise or lower the antenna until it finds uh, a, a good match okay right. Right. That's okay. what we're talking about. I, I, I but, get that. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, but okay. let's get to the antenna part. I, I didn't know it was like a brand or whatever. So there are antennas, because I know uh, solar, you know, it used to be the ham radio doldrums when the solar cycles were at its bottom and it's now coming up. And I, sure. in the early days when I was learning about radio, uh, I'm a really old guy, so I did CB back in the uh, 70s, right? Good for you. So. Yeah, uh -huh. I built my own giant Yagi and stuff like that. I it love was it. Fun. I love nice. it. That was a giant nice. thing, love it. Man. And you are you are way more uh, qualified than I am. <laughs> but go ahead. Well, per perhaps. But you know, I have I built built, a Yagi. Uh, I used to have to pedal to the library perhaps. and do stuff and I write it down, right? Perhaps. And you did, didn't need yeah. a photocopying. wasn't even yeah. a real thing either. Yeah. But anyways... Uh, what I wanted to know is, I, I, you know, my kid was fooling around with, with these little Bao Feng things because he's an outdoors guy and they want to have radio so they can talk to each other. And I said, well, you know, you can have those taken away by conservation guys if you're not careful. But mm, anyways, I said, not. It's, well, probably not. You're right. Probably not. But, but I said, you know, the other thing too is you're not going to learn how to use the damn thing if you don't practice. And the only way to practice, I have a license. So we got to, says, I've always wanted a ham license. So a couple of three years ago, we got our ham licenses together. Uh, we went and got a course. I'm in British Columbia, Canada, by the way. But anyways, I'm farting around with these and the, with mostly handheld, uh, low powered stuff. Yeah. I do have one, one radio for VHF only, a fairly high powered one. Well, for VHF anyways, but I wanted to, to decide whether I want to spend more money, you know, as probably is a sore issue with a lot of people. You got to <laughs> deal with it with your wife yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I've spent so money on past, you know, so much money on past hobbies, and never went anywhere. So I'm kind of more cautious now at 67 and having less money to work with it, or not wanting to blow it because you know don't know how long you're going to live. So is is uh, is QRP? You know, can people get out as as we're getting up to the peak of I think it's 2025? Are these antennas that I can put in my backyard, like these vertical whips? Because I don't, I don't quite have enough room for a, for a, uh, you know, I think I have enough room maybe for forty meters, and that's about it. So, well, what I'll, about like the lower frequencies? I'll let Mike go first. I, I have my own thoughts here, but Mike, go ahead. That's a, that's a, that's a lot to unpack. It, it, but I mean, I think the that, QRP uh, was the big question. thing. He was, he was aiming yeah, at the yeah. QRP. I think. I want to start so, off small, right? So, you know, because QRP is, you can buy a lot of radios that are fairly low powered. So I thought I'd, because I don't know if I'm going to like it or not, or get into, I don't want to spend a pile of money and go, yeah. hey, you know, I don't know. Dude, I'm, Josh, I'm, I'm feeling your size right there. Um, You're feeling how my much size? Money, what do you mean? Yes. Like, I, I hear you're just, ah, <laughs> how <laughs> much, so let me ask, and I'm sorry, what was your name? Um, I, I'm Boris in the list here. Uh, I guess I could put my, uh, Boris, how I, I much money be... are you? That's, that's enough. Boris, how much yeah. money are you trying to spend? Oh, you know, maybe a couple of hundred bucks or so, maybe, maybe 300 at the most. Yeah. yeah. I, I started, let me just preface this. I started looking at the, uh, Yesu 9 on one a and thinking, oh, but that's a lot of money and then there's antennas and cable. And well, that's well, a lot nice more radio. than a couple hundred dollars. No, no, no. I get that. I get that. That's sort of one of those, oh, I wish I could do that type thing. And that's what I want to sort of head towards. Right. But eventually something that it can do it all. And I'll have to have a bazillion radios in my shock but you know that sort yep. of happens anyways <laughs> you know? so would you consider yourself more do you want to do you want to do radio in your house or would you rather go out in the field and do radio i can't drive anymore unfortunately uh because of my eyesight so i'm sort of restricted uh mostly at home and if i was to go out i'd have to go out with others per perhaps in in my club or something but i haven't uh, got to that level yet so okay so you want um, my yard to start probably <sighs> This is always the question, isn't it? So it's a fairly large yard, but my wife's taking it over with gardening. So I gotta like claim my space before she's done. So there's 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 let me ask one more question. 
what do you want to do with ham radio on hf oh he's asking all the questions the man knows that's it he's got it <laughs> yeah yeah and i want to sort of see if i want to mess around it's just mostly a, like most people it's a hobby and, but do you, you want know, to listen do you want to make contact do you want to yeah, do digital wanna make, do you want to do voice listen. what do you want to do give us I, I, give us I a already, little more sure i already listen like you know i already have an sdr that does all the channels from sdr yeah. play guys so it's not the cheapest thing it's you know it's but it's not the the, the expensive crazy things that are you know ten thousand so, dollars either but so it have works, you, so i have a small so, loop or i have a small loop to mess with so i have a little active loop that i bought from china you know type okay. crap but i'll probably you know if i'm going to continue to listen you know i'll i'll string up a a wire somewhere between the you know, parts of the property or whatever, just have one wire, you know, some long wire, but I, you know, I don't know if an NFED is really the best thing to use. Right. Well, so an NFED is a good, an NFED is a good thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, dep it, it depends, but exactly. for me, that's why I'm asking, I have <laughs> what does it depend on? 99.9% .9 of the time. And I'm a portable guy. So even if I go out on my front porch, I'm using an NFED. It's just always. Oh, okay. Actually, I don't remember the last time I used a dipole. I am always using an NFED or a quarter wave vertical, but 99% of the time I'm using an NFED. So to clarify, um, you, you're kind of ready to start, like you want to make contacts, right? Is that kind of... Right. I already, I already okay. listen. And even my dumb little loop thing that I have that the dog ate the cable on, I got to fix, but you know, um, I don't know what's so tasty about them, but anyway, the, the, I, you know, I can hear the stuff. So I, I know stuff's getting to me and it's getting you, better and better. So are you like, only focus? Are you, are you only looking to get on HF? Oh no, I'm already on VHF and UHF. I already do that's that. Not my, that's not the, my the, question. When you um, want to okay. make contacts, are you looking for radio that's VHF, UHF, you know, and HF? Do you want like all the bands and all the modes or what are you, what are you trying to do? Well, originally I thought, you know, I'd start off with UHF, VHF because it's reasonably inexpensive for the most part. The antennas are way smaller. You can make your own little well, quarter just waves. What's the answer? And, Go ahead. Yeah. Give him the answer. Right. Go ahead. I, I don't, I, I don't. I just want to see if I want to explore and spend and work into that area because I already uh, work in the UHF VHF and I want to so know it, whether Mike, let me yeah, dive in. Here. Let me dive in for a go second. Ahead, go ahead, go ahead, yeah. go ahead. Oh. So if if you have SDRs and you can put up a wire antenna, are you already doing that? Well, I haven't put up the the wire yet. I just bought but the bail and fork because they're high in bait pedance. But I yeah, wanted but to see how much more money I'm going to spend here. That's all. So. Uh, did you say you, you, you have a hard time with vision, right? Did I hear that correctly? Uh, well, I, yeah, I mean, I have vision, but I just, I don't have good enough vision to drive. So I'm kind of stuck, uh, not, not well, being how, able to go places. And, 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 I, and I don't want to drive too difficultly or too hard into this, but uh, some radios are horrible for people that are sight disadvantaged. So yeah, I know. Could you could you describe how difficult it is for you to? Oh see no, no, I, I have no trouble. Like I can see the radios and stuff. Okay, so here's my problem: is that at the price range you're talking about, the closest like full featured radio is a Shagu G90. That's like four hundred and fifty dollars, but the screen is the size of a postage stamp. It's tiny. Yeah, that tiny. might be good. Is that that? Yeah, is that that uh, Chinese thing or whatever? It is Chinese. Uh, right. it would be almost impossible to get a Japanese radio for that price. But at yeah, the same no. time, if you are looking for an all band, all mode radio, uh, you could explore the used market and try to find a Yesu FT817 or 818. Those sure, are, yeah, I know those. and those are radios that are going to hold their value. If you decide it's not for you, you could resell it, and you wouldn't be out much money. You could, you, right. you probably could make money on the back end, actually, on it. Um, the The advantage of that radio is it's it's going to do all the things you want to try. It's going to be a little confusing and complicated to do it, but it will do all the things, and that's what makes the the Yesu eight eighteen and eight seventeen so good. I am so playing devil's advocate on this. Go ahead, go ahead, do I it. Love, there is love no it. way. There is no way. So first off, I can't believe I'm doing this. The screen on the G ninety is much bigger than a postage stamp. So 
uh, if not you much, can read, not much, it's, not much. It, it, no, that's no, no. It's it's probably Two twice the steps. size at least. Uh, 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 it's small. Uh, uh, it's small. Uh, uh, uh. He he if has screen, he said he, wait he says he can't on, Josh, drive Mike Josh, he said he can't drive nobody's driving Josh I okay. didn't interrupt you please don't interrupt okay, sorry, me I, I, while I, I interject and I, completely I destroy what you just said I thank apologize. you I apologize I apologize I love you Mike go ahead <laughs> so I love you too so the screen on the G90 is small but it is the same size as any screen on any DMR radio which is twice the size of a postage stamp. I mean, we're talking, we're talking like one and a half inches diagonal. It's not big, but, and I can't speak for how, how sight impaired you are. I mean, I have to wear glasses. I wear contacts. If, if I don't, I mean, I can still see it, but it's 400 and the G90 is your gateway. Okay. Anything other than the G90. There does not exist a radio until you get to, uh, in terms of screen size, the 891, which is $650. I can now, do you that. said, okay. your, you said your price point was like $200? Well, no, I was just, just to start off and fool around to see if I was even interested in it. Because, like I said, m my dream was I was looking at the... The ASO 991 because it does pretty much everything and CFM4, which is what I already use on on uh, VHF UHF, right? Mostly VHF. So if you, so if you so, already but, have but C4 I just FM. wanted to buy. I just wanted to buy a radio that basically did a, pretty much everything I would want to do. But well, I don't I know if I want to spend that much in Canada. They're they're like I don't know twenty seven hundred bucks, right? Are you open to yeah. buying used? You're, 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 Are you open to buying used? Oh yeah. Hey, hey Mike. Listen, Mike, we're. Mike, uh, remember your G106 is available at $279. No. Don't do that, right. Josh. No, 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 no. So the, 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 and I, and I'm pretty sure that all of us would, would agree on this general consensus. Yeah. The, oh, the G90? The, the baseline price quality radio to get into HF ham radio is Zygu G90. Uh, yeah, I think so. How's the receiver there, on those? Is, is you can is get all, it's, it's good. It's, it's a it's, it's a four it's a four hundred dollar receiver. That's what it is. Oh. <laughs> it, I have I have one. Yeah. No filtering. It, 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 there's it, no it, filtering, it, but it. I'll tell you what. I love my G90, and I'll tell you okay. what. Everybody that those. has a G90 will say the same thing. So if you go anything let, lower than a G90, you're not going to be happy. Let me let me give you let me give you the only issue with the G90. So yeah, there, there's very little filtering. Do you at all desire? To, do, do you all desire to get into Morse code at all? Um, eventually, yeah. I'm, okay. I'm sort of uh, one of the things about Morse code that's that's really not. I like to listen. Like I I you know these. SDRs, right? You can, it's like, like in the case of mine, I can run nine tuners at once. So I can listen yeah. to like nine repeaters on VHF at once sort of thing. So he, right? here's and the I thing. like that. Yeah. But so I here's like to the also thing. be able to listen to, you know, uh, different ch frequencies. I pass around in my shop, right? I can listen yeah. to CW, okay. right? Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. So the G90 um, has no filtering and the Morse code is very wide. Um, uh, if you're running Morse code on the G90, it, it's not a great experience. The filtering is, is pretty bad on it. Well, I could use my SDR, can I? Uh, can it transmit? Or on the receive side? Yeah. Is that where oh, the filtering is bad or could. the transmit side? Uh, the yeah. receive side. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, we're problem solving wait, now. Wait. Yeah. So if Sorry, you, if you, you say you're, you are going to do Morse code. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm thinking sending. about it. Where I'm just this is all you're you know, thinking about it, or are you point. proficient? Are you proficient no, in more code at sending? All. No. All right. No. No. So but you, you need an entry level HF radio. But right. Mike, yeah. Mike, hear him out. He has a good SDR, so he could do CW receiving on the SDR okay. and transmit yes. on the G90. That would be perfect. Know. That would be perfect. Right. So, sounds Gosh. like a good candidate for the Hermes light to me. All right. So hang oh, on. Let's oh, let's oh, the what? Oh, you no. know what? Wait, wait. You know what? No, no. Wait, wait, wait. Yes. Wait. wait. Uh, Boris, Boris, how, how 
proficient are you on computers? Like, how good are he you? He wants on to spend two hundred dollars, guys. No, no, yeah, no, no. I true. just, I was just picking a number out of the air. I mean, I'll okay. go higher. Uh, like, if the thing we're, we're now two thousand know. dollars. What? No, no. The, Her- the Hermes on, Light's four hundred bucks. It's four hundred fifty oh, bucks. Right, it's well, easy. Right. It actually is a pretty good answer. Carry on. Yeah. Pretty good radio. It, it's a fantastic. Yeah, when it comes when it comes to computers, I got my first computer in 1981, and I helped so you're bring good. a lot of I helped bring a lot of this stuff that you we are using now. And you're welcome. Okay. 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 Uh, uh, well, <laughs> thank the you. fact the fact that he said you're welcome. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, well, Mac or Windows? Though. This Hang is on. The, this is the kind of attitude where I'm going to throw um, this. I'm going to throw I'll this. Give at you an you. answer to that. Both. Hermes will work oh, with all he, with both. And he's, he's multi he's multi operator based. Okay, right. so here's right. the radio you might want to look at. Uh, you're not going to go anywhere. We've already decided you're not really that portable. You want a good shack yep. radio. The Hermes Light is one of the best receivers in the amateur radio market. I don't care what anybody says. You will hear better on this radio than most radios that you can buy right now for many hundreds of dollars more. And it's a four hundred fifty something dollar radio. It's a fantastic radio. I don't know if Don's already dropped the link yet. He might have. No, I, I didn't. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab the link for it. Um, I, I this is That'll this be is nice, what I'm suggesting. I, I already wrote down the name, so I I'll, so, I can do it. There's no so, point in anybody. So here, wasting here's time. what I recommend. Here, please, uh, Boris, if you hear me say this right now. So you can buy the two hundred and seventy dollar radio, but you you need the add on board for it. And I highly, highly recommend you go mo- watch my video. I, I did a review of this radio. It was a live stream where we walked through setting it up and getting it on the air. And it oh, is okay. a very, very good radio. It's a very good radio. Mm-hmm. Highly yeah. recommended. It, it right. compares to a $4,000. Uh, and it basically is the basis for a $4,000 Apache Labs on it. And, it, and go watch really? Coffee and Ham radios this morning to see yep. what Bob Nagy has to say about SDR radios because that right. that radio is top of the heap in wow. in transmitters. Now, the Hermes is a small version of that, but it runs the same software and actually it runs more software. There is software for the Mac, there's software for Linux. Uh, so many so many possibilities. Right. It is an amazing radio for what uh, and the guy doesn't even make them anymore. Uh, I mean, he's not developing on it. He still supports it, but right, it, right. it is just right. an amazing, amazing radio. Okay, so now that we have a hard on for all this software defined radio that's out there, let's 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 come back down to earth. Let me be antennas, as, which as is what were. I wanted to start it. Devil's <laughs> but that's cool too, though. So Boris, um, and and. Literally everything that everybody said, unfortunately, including Don and 5 skt they're right. So you have to like, I'm going to liken this to, so I play guitar, okay? I didn't start playing guitar with Gibson Les Paul Customs. I started on a Series 10. That was my first guitar. Like, nobody's heard of a Series 10. No one. You're kind of, a, you're, I mean, I have. Maybe two other people. So, where do you want to go? How much do you want to spend? Um, you know, as as a beginner, do you want to go from a beginner where you are right now to um? Now, to be fair, I did go from a beginner guitar to a Gibson Les Paul standard, but um, <clears throat> my my dad bought it for me. My daddy. My daddy so like, bought so it for so me. Like, but I, he I was bought like my 12. rock and roll guitar for me. I was like, I was twelve, I'm and kidding. I proved I'm, myself. I'm okay? kidding. I'm kidding, Mike. I'm kidding. Uh, I know. I know. I, I know. And, and that was that was great. My daddy bought it. So it, it's kind of like, where do you want to go? How how many steps up do you want to go? Because the G90 <laughs> will do everything you want it to do right now. But if you're like an OG computer guy and all the other things that these guys are saying about the Anon and, and all that or doing your thing. Listen, knock yourself out. If you want to spend 400 and let's just say $450, buy a G90, plug it in, 
Yet 160 meters through 10 meters, so 3.5 megahertz all the way up to 30 megahertz. Sure. You get a waterfall display. You get a spectrum scope. You get everything. The speed it sounds good. The speaker's loud. It's 400 bucks, you know. So if you want to go up from there, then the next step is that 400. Let's say 450 dollars for the G90. Then you're going to be in that eleven, twelve, thirteen hundred dollars for that uh, uh, that nine ninety one. And by the way, don't buy a nine ninety one because yeah, Yesu don't. Sucks. Oh snap! Oh snap! Yesu doesn't suck, but the nine ninety one sucks. I'm yeah, sorry. the nine ninety one sucks. It's nine ninety one. The nine ninety one. Watch, watch is, its no, number don't. one sucking point. Uh, uh, I like that built in antenna tuner and all kinds uh, of cool uh, thing. SW. We're you not know. on that point. We're here okay. to help Boris. Right. You you should we'll not argue um, about why it sucks later. If, if what anybody, can we do to? Yeah, is there a video on why it sucks? I yes, yes. yes. Um, yes. Co yes. Coffee yes. and videos yes. this morning. Go yes. watch it. All right. If I if I may also if I may also for a base station radio having an internal antenna tuner is just something that's leeching money out of your wallet. Oh. The best the best antenna tuner if you if you need a tuner should be at the antenna feed point which should be at the other end of the coax that your radio is right. connected to. No, I That's get the that. best but situation. That G90 tuner will legit tune damn near anything. Well, that's true, oh. but fine. Yeah. One of, Zygu, as, as much as I rag on Zygu and as much as I love Zygu, Zygu or Shiegu or Shagu. Zoro, however you Shagu. want to say it. Shagu. Yeah, well, uh, Mr. Hunsville, we're not going to take lessons from you. No, you would on Chinese you probably should. <laughs> it's it's ma it's it's Mandarin actually, so no. Uh, on uh, Chinese, thank you very much. Yes. What if I'll, it's Cantonese? When, when, when Leia comes Chinese in joke. here and it's schools me, then it's I'll believe it. Okay. It's a joke. It's a joke. It's Shagu. The Zygu radio it's from Leia. Oh, it's Shagu. It's Shigu. The Shagu radios will will tune damn near anything. But don't rely on a tuner. They'll tune up a wet noodle. He needs a power supply, right, guys? Battery. No, I won't have any trouble with power supplies. Don't worry about it. There you go. No problem with no power supplies. Power supplies. I yeah no no I have no I build them so that's not a problem, right? Can I get a word in? You can try. You, you just did, but you <laughs> might want you're out of another though. I think. Yeah. Yeah, Craig, Katie, now you QE. Um, you know, 18 months ago when I looked at this whole thing and heard this and that and about a dozen other things, and honest to goodness, the best money I spent was on a Kenwood TS590S, digital ready, everything built in, 700 bucks, plenty of them out there. SG's 1,000, 7,300s are going for seven. You couldn't uh, pay me to take a G90 over a well-built radio like that that resells if I don't like it for the same money I paid for it because I'm you're, selling mine. You're, 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 you're towing a line, which I like. I love Kenwoods. I really do. I really do like Kenwoods. And I do like their uh, that particular radio and the two offerings they had there. I, I don't... I, um... You're starting to sound like me because I'm I'm so old that Kenwoods to me are home stereos. They're, they don't no, they no. don't they don't sound like ham radios to me for some strange reason. No, the, the the Kenwoods are great. The whole the whole Kenwood radio is great. And Sherwood as well. Keep fighting. I'll be right back. I know, but 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 why would someone want to sell it then? You know, yeah, is it is it because they want to get something better or are they short on money? Or right? yeah, why not just keep it? Hobby? Or they're yeah, not going to do true. mobile anymore, or they're going to be It does be tuned by pictures. Guys actually have to spin an auger, plug it into your computer, and look at the waterfall. So oh, why would you buy already have just a waterfall. Just on the waterfall? Yeah. But that's all good, but I, I, I want to understand this antenna thing a little bit better, right? So 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 if I, if I strung, for example, a... 
uh, which I don't have uh, now, but there's a, there's those antennas I that I hear called beverage antennas. We can like throw them on the ground, it, it, you know, and I wanted to mess around with my kid. If he goes out in the woods and gets himself a little QRP junker or whatever, uh, you yeah. know, some little cheap, cheap thing. And, and he's, you know, a couple of hundred miles away, you know, uh, can we mess around with it? Because I keep bugging him that he's got to prepare for the zombie apocalypse, okay. which I won't so, be around for. So beverage antenna shows up in the, the ham radio handbooks for the tests, and a beverage antenna is a listening antenna. It's a receive-only uh. antenna. The design is a low, long wire. I, I, is it half wave or full wave? Someone correct me in the chat. Is it half wave? Uh, I believe Probably it's usually full wave. Traveling be, wave. Yeah, it's it's at least full wave. Okay. Your shortest beverage is six hundred feet. So imagine oh. imagine like a forty meter full length, so forty meters of wire that you're right. dragging out at lower than four feet. And it also has to have a bleeder on one end and it's designed for receiving. They're uh, really, really good at receiving, but that's all they do. They're just for reception. Oh, so I can use that for my SDR. You can uh, but they take up an immense amount of space, and the people who generally use them are like very, very committed ham radio contesters. That that's uh -huh. like what they're all about is is beverage antennas. But why do they? Why are they so good at receiving? Do they actually? Uh, you know, are they more for 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 bouncing off? Like, do they? They don't pick up. Uh, I guess because they're such a steep angle, they only get. You know, are they? good range in general because well, they're you know, mono-banded they so they're, they're uh. so they're mono-banded they're one-banded antennas that are designed for the band that they're cut for uh. and they'll do a pretty good job within that band but that's the design of them is that they are going to be very effective on that one band for receiving and so people might set up you know multi-band right. of these antennas just run along with them uh to Right, you know, depending you, you on lay setup. down a couple of them or whatever, three or four, or whatever you want to do if you have the room, I guess. Group yeah, on he's... the ground is making a comeback for both transmitting and receiving, and I know the DX commander put up an excellent video on that. Yeah, so uh, let, I hear they, okay, they Boris, can't Boris, transmit though, Boris. I, I, yeah, I, let me tell Hold on, hold on. hold on, hold on. So, Boris, did, did we answer your questions? Are you? Do you feel like you're feeling pretty good right now, or what, where? Yeah, where, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, where, where I'm, you even I'm hit pretty the good now. But, but I mostly wanted to understand because they were talking. About, it all started with these whip things. Like, do they, do they work pretty good? Will they? The know? ham sticks. Hamsticks yeah, are like, fine. like all kinds of them. There's so many different kinds of these things. I mean, there's ones that you can buy and you and you put a piece of concrete in the ground and you can you can put a pretty good pole on that. But the ground plane is just wires you drag out. Are those not too bad? Do they work? Hamsticks uh, work okay, but they're they're a loaded coil base antenna, right? So it's a sure. coil of wire. Those coils are not very effective for RF transmission. It's the it's the whip because you're the wasting end. them, right? You're wasting power, right? No, you're not wasting it. You're just it it's not transmitting effectively. It's the it's the single whip at the end that's doing all that heavy lifting. Right, to right. Transmit. You're just using the coil to tune the thing, so you only right. get out whatever's on the whip. Right. So, uh, tar heel, the the screwdrivers, all of that suffer for the same problem. Hamsticks are compromised antennas. They're all compromised. They're good. On, They're effective. On. Oh, Mike's back. The question is, do they work? Yes. yes. Yeah. But so if it so, depends. the question is, is as well. The thing is, okay, Mike. Mike, hold on. Hold, wait, wait, wait. Hold on one second. I have to run to the restroom now that Mike's back. I'll let him take over, and then you can For keep sure. going with hamsticks. I will be. Dude, right I back. ran in here because I was outside having a fag. Oh. Stop Every smoking! Stop antenna. smoking fags, okay? I'm know, just kidding. I know, uh, I know. Take take it away from me. I'll be right back. Every antenna is going to have a compromise right. somewhere, right? If you well, put that... up, so let me let me let me clarify this. The very first antenna that I ever bought was a Wolf River Coils, and it worked. It still works amazingly. The compromised. Loaded coil with a a six foot whip. Are you going to make contacts? Absolutely. Yes, you will. Is it the best? Well, that depends. 
Right. Is it the, is it's great for portable because it's small and it's compact and it's lightweight and I can take it portable. Is it the best for my backyard as a listening or transmitting antenna at my shack? No, of course not. I have an I have two 80 meter end fed half waves at my house right now. That's what I use. Use what you have that you can that you can use. I mean, try, the bottom line is try everything because the, and, and we all say this and we joke about it and say that the answer is always it depends, but that is the answer. So what are your working conditions? What can you put out there? What do you want to do? What are you willing to do? What can you do? Do you have an H, do you have an HOA? If you have, if you can put up a 40 meter end fed half wave antenna, do it. Right. That's that, so that, will, that will generally garner you more everything than a wolf of recoils sitting in the middle of your garden. Right. That's hey, what Mike, I was, I'm yeah, remind you of something you've talked about. Sorry, there was a couple of people in there. Uh, right. uh, uh, go ahead. Yes, yeah, Craig, you've uh, you've talked about it in the past previously. And- it's a hot topic, but um, the most important part between that antenna and your radio is your cable. Guys are getting the all-in-one antenna, all-in-one radio, and running RG58 with nothing correct in between it. You've, uh, I mean, what's it cost for 100 feet of the, the best uh, Italian coax that works? That's a far better investment than... Uh, almost any of those compromised antennas. At least you could tune a gutter and not lose half of your power and pick up all the noise in the neighborhood. So he's talking about coax, and and there are losses that you're going to have in whatever coaxial cable feed line. Yeah, I'm, that you, I'm aware that you, of all that. that you have. I, I already on got HF. I uh, yeah, uh, HF. It isn't as significant because it's, it's such a lower frequency. I it already really use is. LMR 400 for my VHF right. and UHF stuff. So. So that that's a moot point. So if you're using LMR right. 400 going into a Wolf River coils versus LMR 400 going into a dipole, you know, a 40 meter dipole or right. uh, a Wolf River coils a tuned waste. for 40 meters, you're going to hear more uh, typically from that you know, 40 meter dipole because you have 66 feet of wire in the air. Right. So, you know, it's, 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 what are you trying to do? I mean, I, I use a Wolf River coils. I use all kinds of antennas given my operating conditions. Coax is a part of it. Um, I do consider coax when I go out. I have more coax than probably any ham should ever own, but it's antenna, antenna, antenna. I don't right. the, the the radio is the the le- the least factor. It's for me it's more just I have these radios which one do I want to play with today? When I go out it's what antenna do I want to use? So well, whether that's it's how, a Wolf River that, Coils comment. or an Atos or a Tar Heel or any right. of any of those kind yeah. of ground mounted vertical uh, uh compromised antennas where you're adding inductance via a coil, they're kind of all going to work the same. I mean, you can put more wires out on the ground, get a little more conductivity, maybe help a little bit more. And even a DX Commander, it's still a vertical, it's a ground-mounted vertical antenna. It's it's not magic. It's just, right. you know. Well, that's does, why I does... prefaced it, you know, the talk here. It was mostly antennas. I understand coax. I understand the losses. I mean, there's charts yeah. for all that stuff. There's a calcul- yeah. couple of calculators. All that stuff I totally understand. So I have no issues with it. What I'm trying to understand is, you know, how good are some of these, these, these antennas? Because I'm willing to do more. If if it's worth but it, but how I've good done, compared to what? Oh uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. That's, That's the problem. That's right. That's what I'm trying to understand is how good will a half half wave end fed be compared to a, a dipole of that frequency? Okay, can can I jump in now that I'm um, back? Uh, yes. So multi band antennas are generally going to be worse off and compared to right. a dipole antenna that is specifically cut for that band of operation. 
if all you wanted to do was that band of operation, putting a dipole as high up as you can get it is going to be very good, right? In comparison to a wire antenna. If you wanted gain, then you're going to have to add elements to that. Then it becomes right, right. a yaggy. Yeah, then, it's, stuff. then it's all that other stuff, right? So we've spent a lot of time on this question. Do you think you have what you need to get going with that? Um, not really. Uh, sort of yes and no, because I wanted to hear comparisons. That's why I stuck with antennas originally. We went elsewhere. Cause a I comparisons between way. what? So, well, like so, for example. Wait, wait, wait. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and throw this back yeah, to yeah, you, yeah. and I want you to be very clear on what you want a comparison for, and we're going to give it to you. Go ahead. Right. I, I have the space for verticals. I have, but verticals are omnidirectional, so a lot of power is wasted. Dipoles, you can, you know, put put them in a certain direction, and then there's the end fed stuff, and in things like an end fed, can I put it, like, put put a 90 in it and get more direct different directionality out of it type thing? Like, can I run it down one side of my property and put a pole at one end and then run it 90 degrees you're, along you're the back? You're, like, side? preaching. You're preaching all this crazy stuff. What's the Preaching. question, man? What, what's the question? What you, no, no, I'm trying to. The question is, is that will antennas like which is the best that you think? If I have a choice there, between there is no dipole, best, there is no best, okay. there is no best. Hang on, I understand hang on. that, and, and you're and you're trying to oh, gleam wow, the. Wow, wow, wow. You're trying no, no, to no, no, gleam. No. Hang on, hang on. Okay, Mike, I'm gonna. You, I, this has been going Boris, on for a very long time. We we I need know. to move oh, on to this a little bit. We're gonna. We're I'm gonna end it with this. I want to keep him here for hours. Boris, from what you just said, you have room to put up all kinds of antennas. Yes. Verticals do one thing. And feds do another. Dipoles do another. You need, we, as hams, experiment. Set it up. Find out what it does for you. Because what all of your antennas that you own, if you gave them to me and I set them up, they would do different for me than what they do for you. So set I don't them have up. That many. And ex all right, so I have so say you have three. Who cares? Set them up and see what they do. Experiment. That's the name of the game. Yeah. You have antennas and you have room to set them up. See what they do. Yeah. Th there's too many variables. Get an antenna book. You tell you tell us what they're gonna do. Thank you. Thank you. Th there's there's too many variables in your specific instance for us to say this is the best the best well, thing no, you can do is try them okay. right but, but the what, best what is I'm a pack 10 and fed half wave and a dx commander there expedition. you go there you go okay and but, I, but I can you take an end fed and run it at 90 and will it change will it change like will i get different directions will it help yeah, yeah right? it'll, because it'll that's, null out yes it'll null out yes. everything yes. you do if there's a tree near you it's going to change it everything right, affects I'm aware everything of that. i'm aware of that right but i'm just saying so, saying is is that if i wanted to have some signal wait 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 wait, wait, Bo wait stop stop boris okay. every time you ask a question it is also followed by talking about everything you know is there anything you don't know that you actually want to know? Because it sounds like every time we mention That's something, you I'm say, asking. wait, wait, wait. It sounds like every time we mention something, you say, I know that. So Mike already said, if you rotate it, then you said, I know that. Is there something you don't actually don't know that you want to know about? Yeah, yeah, that's why I specifically. Well, he answered your question, an, and then I, you, he, he wow. answered your question, and then he came back with, I no, know I, that. I, 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 yeah, because of, of coax, but but I'm saying, well, and I know about trees. I know things will affect it. I'm okay, saying so then what do you it, actually want from us? Because well, you're, you're hogging to, up all I'm this time to. for people that are newer hams. All right. You, you sound like you already know all this stuff. No, I don't. Hey, I'm, Josh, asking, I'm specific. I'll ask a specific question. Go ahead. If I don't think I so. I ran an end fed and I put a tuner, which is an important thing, instead of at the radio, and I put it at the at the at the feed point, okay. uh, and I and I ran it, it, it one direction so that it it goes north south, and then then I ran it as long as I could that way, and then I ran it ninety degrees, and and it went east west. Is that a good combo? Because that's what I'm thinking about, and I just want to understand that. Like is if, that if, a good? Is that is that a good combo yeah. for you? Well, yeah. so first off, if you're running an fed, you shouldn't need a tuner. So just throw out your tuner. Oh, but you can't, okay. you can't, and you have to understand, Boris, that where you are is different than where everyone else is. So I know 
if you put your NFED half wave or whatever, whatever, let's just call it antenna X, if you put it up in one configuration and then you put it up in another configuration, well, where do you want to get out? Where do you want it to go? I mean, you have to. I don't know. Experience. I'm in British so, Columbia so, and I don't know which is the best way to go. Is, is oh, the rest you of you go? are good? Where do you want to go? So yeah, I have an I don't know, man. That. I have an answer. I don't that. know. You, okay, wait, wait, guys, have... guys, wait, wait, stop, yeah, stop, stop, Whoa, stop. You don't know where you, do you want to work Guys, Europe? guys, we got to move on. Japan? We got to move on. Okay, wait, right. wait we yeah, got to move know. on. Sorry, I'm move. out. Bor Boris, there's so much information that everybody's given you. You got to go sit down and go experiment. If you want to go buy the radio, you can. If you don't want to buy the radio, you don't have to. It sounds like you got some SDRs. You can put some antennas up on the air. And feds are great. Where you move them will change what they can hear. All this stuff, it sounds like you know, though. So it's like... Where are we really going with this? And I'm not actually asking that question because I, I don't really want to hear the reply because I want to try and help more people. And we spent a lot of time on this, so I, I want to move on if we can. Okay? So sure. thank you, Boris. I hope that helps. There's a lot of information there. Explore that space. Explore all that information. I hope you took studious notes because right. we literally talked to, for 45 minutes. So Go ahead, take all that stuff and and let us know how it works all out for you. Uh, come back next week and let us know. But with that said, I want to take more questions. I think we lost some of the questions in the fact that this whole thing went so long. But if there's anybody who has a question on the Discord, if you want to jump forward on voice, go ahead. Or I'm looking at the YouTube for more questions. Go right ahead. Go for it now. Hi. I have a um, quick opinion question. So I saw multicast first, and then we'll go to the next one. All right. So quick opinion question. So ham radio trailer, say you have a four by six utility trailer, weighs about 400 pounds. You put a 30 foot mast on it. You go out for a day activation. Would you guide the mast if it had a hex beam on top of it? Does it need to be guide? That's what I'm asking. I'm asked. I, I, I don't want to guide it. I, I don't. Well, wait, 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 wait. That that's dependent on the mast uh, wind loading that that you're potentially putting it on. That's not up to us. That's up to the mast. The mast is going to so tell you what the wind loading uh, guidance it, is. It's effectively telescoped EMT conduit. Then no. You should guy it. All right. There we go. Like yeah. I said, it, it, uh, you're you. talking about conduit for putting like cabling through, like wiring through. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah condo. no please do not put a hex beam on that please guy that's not even a proper that's not a proper mast that's not a proper mast straight up i'm all sorry right, to, well, i'm sorry to tell you that. i'm sorry to tell you uh top right. rail fence top rail is going to be a bit more resi rigid so okay here's the problem with with uh conduit it's designed to be bent that's what it's designed to do like people have jigs to bend it 90 degrees to put into installations for running data cable. So if, if you want a, a semi-decent uh, mast body, a uh, top rail for a fence would be much better. Do not use conduit. Please don't use conduit. Uh, how, to, how, how high are you trying to get it? Uh, about 30 feet. Oh, yeah. You can't, use, you can't use conduit for that. You can't do it. Go, go so by yourself. conduit to be kind of... I was using conduit to be kind of quick. So the bottom sections actually looks like actual mass, like a Roan mass, but it's home built aluminum, pretty thick wall. Uh, there's an aluminum tube. And then I was actually looking at grabbing some Home Depot uh, structural pipe. It's like thicker version of conduit to be uh, an added section to get it up. To uh, are, are you are you being cheap for cheap? cheap sake or are you being cheap because you're re required to be cheap because otherwise i'd say go get a 30 foot roan push-up mast with the guy plates already attached that you just tap off to and guy it out just just do that for a hex beam you're gonna be much better off and it's gonna be way more permanent because it's designed to stand up to the weather all right i'll look into that and, Please. and where's your rotator going no i shouldn't well, for a hex beam, yeah, Don, you're right. Oh, that's right too. Yeah, no, I'm going through all of that. I know it's it's not. I got a roan mast, and I'm still wondering. Okay, where oh, where exactly right. does rotator go? So it, it really needs to go on the bottom, but geez. 
The bottom? No. Yes. If there's a tray at the, at the top, the if there's a at tray the, at the top, that's fine. There's not. Not on a roan. Not on a thirty foot roan mast. On a thirty foot or a thirty foot roan tower, there would be. Yeah. So that that's the problem when you start talking tower game. Um, you have to put up a tower, right? And, mm -hmm. and so that's when you have the you know the tri base yeah. towers, the three legged towers where there's a plate you know towards the end true you put the rotor on and then you you shoot the mast up out of that but that's really what they're talking about yeah but many hex beams are mounted on masts at the top of masts and okay. they usually rotate or they they locate the rotator underneath and they get they basically guy it to say a two by not a two by four what is it a four by four uh yeah. three to four feet in the ground and I they I mounted want, against that. I, I want everybody to. I, I want everybody to hear us as we're talking about this. So, um, the th the thing to remember here, and and Nate R the Greater, or Nader the Greater, telescoping flagpole. The thing to keep in mind is if you put a hex beam on the top of something, a hex beam antenna is a multi banded. It, it's a two element HF antenna. It's going to add wind load, right? This side to side all direction wind load and if you have a whippy telescoping flagpole it may be able to handle it it may be rigid enough most likely though it's probably not that's when you need a, a proper ham radio tower i hate to say that but uh hex beams are kind of like that graduation point where you start looking at actually putting up a tower for most people, you can't just walk into gain thinking that like, oh, a hex beam, I'll just put up a hex beam. It it, it, it seldom works out that way. It really does. Mm. Yeah, look at what Jody dropped in the chat. I'm not saying you can't. I'm not saying there are people that has not. Just mm -hmm. once you go down the realm of like multi-element antennas, you're in tower area. You've become one of the elite. You've become one of the one percenters of ham radio. And now you must get all the elements and collect them and own them. That's like, not, what, that's, that's not necessarily my friend. Yeah. You can do, you can do like a three or four element, like 20 meter or less on HF, uh, uh, Yagi uh, yeah. on a tripod with a rotor. You can do it. It is possible. I've definitely looked Show into me. it. Show what, me. What is this? What what, what, what? what is this magic antenna on 20 hey, meters you're building? Josh, y'all do no, that I, at I, your I field day. To like an A4S, a Cushcraft A4S or a Hustler. Wait, what, what, uh, you're talking about the buddy hex? I definitely guide the hell out of that thing. What are you talking about? No, no, no. At your field day, didn't they have a Piyagi? I thought I saw one in the and video. And we guide the hell out of it. Right. We, you can do that. Guide. You no, can no, do no, that. No, I, you do you, no, you absolutely will have to guide if you do a roof mount with a tripod. Wait, 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 wait. No, All you definitely this would. This guideless. Oh, th this whole comment was guideless. It was about. Oh no, I, 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 I went. I went on a tangent. No, yeah, you definitely need guys if you do this. We're, if you want to go guideless, you no. If you go, if your requirement is you have to be guideless tower. Yeah, you we're we're full. Tower. We're full Street Fighter two. We need all the guiles. Eh, I don't Good even. Good reference. I don't, need, I don't even like towers that aren't guide. Become beguiled because you're going to need guys. All right. That's it. Josh, Josh, quick sidebar. What are you drinking, buddy? Uh, I think this is brandy. I switched to brandy. Wow, this is a, a brandy. Where's, where's, oh, our, where's our UK? Where's our UK hams? I got some brandy going it, on. I saw brown water. I'd assume bourbon. I wasn't uh, expecting. It. Uh, no. Yeah. No. I, I'm pretty much tapping the end of all my alcohol. I, I am only now drinking for this after chat. We stopped mm -hmm. drinking at the podcast. I stopped vaping. I, I, I have, whoo, buddy. I've cut it all. Oh out. man, he's cleaning out. up. I'm cleaning it up, man. So when, um, if you watch, by the way, everybody, go watch uh, K6 ARK's video. K6 ARK's video was mm -hmm. the last time I vaped. That video where I was. Uh, camping with them when it was when it died i was done i packed it out that's it i'm getting cleaned up guys i'm getting cleaned up mm, yeah. i'm still gonna drink i'm still gonna drink for the after chat i i enjoy you know hanging out with you guys so we're gonna Good have a little you, bit man. we're gonna have a little bit but it's it's yeah. been nice it's been nice 
No, I need. I I I, I definitely want to quit smoking. I'm basically what I'm waiting for at this point. I actually read an article about it yesterday. The uh, the feds are looking to ban menthols. I do not smoke regular cigarettes. If I smoke regular tobacco, it's a cigar. And if they ban yeah. menthols, I'm gonna I'm automatically I'm not gonna go to regular cigarettes. I'm just gonna go straight to to vape, and then I'm hoping to wean wean up myself yeah. off. It sucks, dude. It is. It's a tough addiction. Yeah, and what was that in Canada? They they now only allow you to have two beers a week. What? Yeah, I, I don't believe that. What is I going on? I don't believe no. it either. No, I I'm gonna throw the BS flag on that one. Oh, go look it up. But yeah, I I there was is watching no way. Some stuff. people in Canada. People in Canada drink a a, a, a ton you of beer. Actually, read yeah, they the do. Article Don. It wasn't an article, was, but yes, was, you're right. Yes, you're absolutely it was an article right. because I just read it. Oh, really? Yeah. And? And it was, so it, it had to do with, like, <clears throat> the recommendations of, like, the FDA and how much should you drink and, like, two drinks. So Canada says two drinks a week is it. Health conscientiously. To be, a, to be, whatever. So now the U.S. is like, and the, and the, this is why the article came came out. The U.S. is now adopting that uh, science that two drinks a week per adult is the maximum like safe alcohol. That's all it was. What a boring mm. life. Yeah. Well. Right? Remember I, when they it, when it, they it, recommended it, you not be I've around second two, mile? I've had two smoking. drinks since this since this live stream. I said I was going to go to bed an hour and a half ago. We keep asking antenna questions. I know, but no, that's no. Read I, the article, Don. Fake news. Fake news. I, okay. I've always I've always looked at it from the standpoint of okay, yeah, I do all these things, and it saves me what. A couple of years of my eighties. Mm -hmm. No, you know what? Yeah. I'll tell you. I'll, I'll tell you. Um, I'm I, good I with hit, that. I I hit my I hit my forties. I'm I'm staunchly in my forties now, and I will say that like my resilience to bouncing back to drinking has diminished significantly. And the problem with that for me, um, you know, versus other people, is that like every day of my life, like I could be doing something. I could be editing a video. I could be making a video. I could be going out and doing, you know, something with my kids or my wife. And and so I was waking up and I was just getting demolished by alcohol. I was just having really I, like consistently worse hangovers. And I tried those little enzyme things. I did the whole thing. And I just realized like it's like eh, it, my time is just more valuable. Like all of you, I, I, I would hope that all of you would agree that my time is more valuable making videos and editing videos than like being a you know toad on the couch being hung over did you also from the night did you also notice though Dosh, yeah. just like being a, a post 40 year old like as you get up you just kind of you're just like Ugh. you you make those noises like the old men noises God, like, i don't know i mean like i I'm, I'm probably all the way there but at the same time if i'm not like hung over yeah i'll hop out of bed i can still do that i can still you know, oh, yeah. lots of the other sure. Ooh, nobody, like I said, smooth, nobody, never mind, never mind nobody, things, but you know, uh, I, I nobody, got you. nobody told me about the upper back and neck pain. Shit, I, I got I you turned, guys. I heard forty. I got like, you guys by. That shit? Hey, I got uh, you guys by twenty years. It only gets worse. Yep, and I've Mike, heard that. Mike, I believe I'm, it. Mike, I'm mid thirties and I'm like that, so <laughs> I'm not looking forward to my forties. Honestly, is, honestly, uh, I was I was mid thirties when I started noticing that stuff. Uh, joint pain. I my dad, my dad, this is not meant to turn this, this no, we're meant turning to turn this, into eighty no, meters. We're, no, we're literally no, turning no, this into eighty meters, guys. I am, we're we're going full one six. See, 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 every one of you little jerks that complain about the people on eighty meters being OMs, complaining about the gout net. You're all doing it right <laughs> now. You're all doing it. You become them, whether you want to become them or well, not. Well, Do you well, understand well, what well. happens? And then now we can all look back. Like now, hopefully, we've all documented this. Nayo. <laughs> Right, many other hams in the mm -hmm. chat. 
Ham radio when we're tube. all like when we're all on eighty meters bitching at mm-hmm. each other, this is like this is why. This Dude, is what but, happens. It, but I'll tell you what, you know what though? In to be fair. To be fair. To be fair. We, we do fair. have eighty meters to look forward to. So we with have that, guys, it. I gotta get I gotta get out of here. I'm gonna say seventy three. I love you all, but I I gotta go. So you should, we'll man. You. you should take it easy. Yeah. You just so you deserve everybody. a good sleep. Say Mahalo. hi to Satan for us. Mahalo. 80 meters starts early. Love it. Hey, don't talk about 80 meters. I'm 66. I got three fusions, a, a shoulder with two two torn uh, rotator cuffs, and a, a bad knee. And everybody's worse than I am on there. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, I, I and I don't know if Mike N8YO remembers this, but you should really talk to Evan about us getting kicked off, literally for mm-hmm. the uh, for that uh, NA4 or N4CL when he did that, and then it was four doctors com- coming on in a net to talk about colonoscopies. I am not kidding you. Yes. That happened. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. Um, yeah, actually, wasn't it, um, Mike, uh, Mike's actually done it multiple times in his videos where he's doing an activation and then somebody comes in and says they have a net and he's just like, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> that stuff. Well, Evan <laughs> held him off for quite a while, but yeah, I, we hang around there afterwards just to see what the hell they were going to, what was so damned oh, important. Yeah, no, they go, no. And they literally started talking about can, colonoscopy. Can I just say like how, like. I, I don't know that I'm going to live stream. I don't know. Like, I, I think I kind of want to commit to the concept of, like, 20, 20 years from now, if I'm still alive, if I can live stream like this on a on a Saturday night and just BS with everybody, you know how crazy that is? It would just be, oh, I don't know. Like, is that is that does that work? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I mean, you do have that oh, 160 what, what, meter. What day? Yet, what day? Because I'm I'm pretty busy that year, Josh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know. It's all mindset. Do it. Just do it. But that's that's uh that's kind of crazy that like the more you think that you're so separate from some group of people, you're actually just not there yet. You just don't know that mm-hmm. you're of that group. You just you just don't get it, and they actually don't know that you're of them. That you just haven't, you know, spent the time yet to really be of them yet. I have two so, things. I have two things I want to mention. Well, actually, I have three things. Uh, Nayo, you go first. Go ahead. You do your thing. No, I don't want to interrupt you. You're right in the zone. Uh, I do have a comment, but go ahead. You go, go ahead. Because because I'm going to disrupt all of this. I'm going to tip over the apple okay, cart. So okay. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, I love it. This is my favorite part of after chat. No, all I was going to say is I live my life by the philosophy that I, I grew up in this hobby. I got my license at 12. And even outside this hobby, I always grew up with those curmudgeon old fucking guys. Ooh. Just people stuck in their ways. We're using I'm the sorry. Big words. I'm We're using out. the big no, words. No, I am using the big words. Um, and I live my life by the principle that I am not going to be that person. Okay. I, I'm going to be 70, 80, 90 years old. I better quit cigarettes if I want to live to 90. Uh, but I, I want to be that guy, that very old guy that still recognizes that young kids, 15, 20, mm-hmm. whatever, still young has something on. Yep. Bone nope. I'm going to be, I'm going to be that guy. I'm not going to be the curmudgeon. So if that's all I was going to say mm-hmm. back to you, my, my friend. Okay, so I want to give a last call for ham radio questions because I got a couple of things I got to hit outside of ham radio. So we we got to hit all of them. We got to hit them all. Who's got a ham radio question? Let's go. Real quick. K A do A U B. Okay, so I saw an A J star up at the top of the chat coming in on Xbox, which that's wild. So go ahead, man. Question. Go ahead, question. <laughs> Sorry, this is the only way I could. Can Are you, hear you me? literally on your Xbox? I am literally watching the stream on my Xbox. This is crazy. I don't know that we've show. ever done this before. You literally have an Xbox logo <laughs> next to your name. This is crazy. Yep. <laughs> I used the built-in uh, Discord I'm on my chat. microwave. I'm talking to you on my microwave. Do you hear me? <laughs> Go Wanna for play it. Halo later? Well, well done. Well done, sir. You, you got the conch. Go for it. Thanks. Okay, so I got a, a Zygu, uh, whatever you pronounce it, the X6100. 
Um, I'm okay. a tinkerer. I have a uh, infed half wave uh, that I made. Um, went down the rabbit hole of uh, making the uh, the infed um, half wave transformer, the forty nine to one and sixty four to one. I've got a couple of those. Okay. Um, even went through and, and, and built multiples of them, tied them together, tested their uh, their loss and everything, all because I'm QRP, right? So the question is, how far down this rabbit hole do I need to go? Because, like, the last – I mean, right now I'm only running 25 feet of uh, RG58. I do have some RG8X, um, which is not much better. Um but uh, I've spent a lot of time building the, uh, the, the transformers. Like, I get 90% uh, efficiency um, all the way up to, I think, um, um, I forget, the, the, the worst one, which I think is uh, 50 megahertz, was like 88% uh, percent efficiency. Anyways, sure. I, I tend to go down these rap, rabbit holes. And I've had a lot of fun. I've... I've contacted you know i think six or eight countries ssb and between that and, and fta and i've got like 30 34 countries contacted and i'm having a lot of fun and it's working it's working well but like i know that the coax is not not the greatest i, I i'm running qrp and i know that there's more things i could do to improve you know efficiency i like the infed halfway because of the fact that i could i can bounce around bands um Okay. So, how far uh, down? I feel like I feel like this chat is. Can everybody just like bring everything back to one point? And, and you, I, I, I love everything you said. I'm not really complaining, but like, what's the question? You, how far down this up, rabbit hole should I go? You, well, hmm. no, you, you already put up. You, you have, uh, you have an antenna on the air. Do you not think that it's, it's good? Is that where we're going for? Or, like, what's the problem? Uh, I guess the diminishing returns, right? Um, My is it worth putting in the effort to go in and like you know run LMR four hundred or or do anything else to improve. I'm having fun with what I've got. Yeah, my my advice would be do it until it's not fun for you anymore. What's the problem? Yes, yes. E either price it to the point that it is too expensive to do it, or the time and your worth is too much. Like ham radio will literally give that to you. If you think that like, oh, if I did this another thing, I might get one tenth of a dB out of the the back end. Oh, it'll give it to you. It'll give it to you. If if you want to do it though, is the question. That's really the question, right? So. So right. for you, like, is super low loss coax going to make that big a difference at uh, okay. at QRP? Probably not. Probably not. It, it it really won't. But hell, if you're having fun with it, go for it. Okay. Uh, I I don't yeah, know. Have a blast. All right, appreciate oh, it. I mean, the the thing is, Josh. I mean, even yeah. if you learn just a tiny little bit, and you're learning it and you're enjoying it, hell, do it. Well, the value of that is, you know. Uh, a ton so so no question there the the question is like is it worth him to spend the money is the back end like is he is he getting some kind of recompense on the back end probably not the, right the fun of it okay fun but you and i find fun ah, different ways and we spend different right. money for different types well, of fun that's up to true him. that's up to right him. and and he said he's having fun with it that's that's my I, point do it wanna, until wanna, you don't have any more fun with it i don't want to argue yeah. dawn while i'm giving him my <laughs> point of view i, I don't want to sure. argue with anybody i'm just i'm just trying to say like yeah you could get low loss coax for your qrp radio but it's probably not going to do that much difference because a lot of the times the lmr 400 stuff is for like really high frequency like uhf you probably already have pretty good coax for you the the placement of the antenna is probably going to be more important how high you can get it up and where you put the line is going to be more important. My point is not to tell you you should buy more things. The question is, is let's figure out where the best placement for your antenna should be. That's that's a that is a that is a real project you yeah. could do that could could help out your situation. Yeah. Right. That right? sounds good. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. There you go. All right. Very good. Yeah, because I, I do have some uh, places that I want to try at. With the different locations and stuff like that, so I'll, I'll put my efforts there instead of 
money because money is really a, I'm like I don't want to drop a bunch of money on on coax if it's not really going to give me a whole lot of gain. And uh, I do have some different I, areas I can. I posted in. I, try. You know, I appreciate it. I posted in the chat. Uh, there's a calculator there that that will calculate different coaxes they have it listed and their losses at different frequencies is very useful. There you go. I appreciate there that. So, all right. Any last questions? Let's take them before I uh, before I turn this wide open. I got some homework. Question. Question. Oh man, so many questions. Uh, I didn't. I saw a T. It was probably the geekiest guy. Well, yeah. I just wanted to say, hey, your your chat only shows up as a letter T. So uh, there's something else going on there. But go ahead. Go ahead. Oh no! Literally, just wanted to say hi. Thank you, man. Oh. Uh, you, you, all of the info you I've gleaned from you has helped me go get so much further in the game here. I just wanted to say thanks. I love listening in, and uh, yeah, finally wanted to just touch base and say, hey, thanks, oh, man. Thank you. Appreciate I, you. I appreciate that, man. Thanks a lot. That's awesome. All right, who's next? Who's next? Question. Uh, I saw Carl. Oh, go ahead, Carl. Gone. Yeah. So, got my call sent about a week ago. Ooh, get choke up on the mic there, bud. Choke up on the mic. Hello. Your your mic is really low. How's now? A bit better. We might be able to make it work. Go ahead. Uh, no, I'll just come back next week. Don't worry about it. No, no, no. You're better now. Whatever you did, do that again. Do more of that. Okay, so uh, I'm a new ham radio. Got my call sign last week, uh, and I wanted to get into mobile, uh, but we've got some uh, hands-free laws up here when you're driving, so I'm only allowed one one button or one action at a time. Uh, are there any good workarounds to, uh, you know, call in, uh while you're behind the wheel, or is that more of a you know, just better not to touch it when you're driving. Comment? Go ahead, comment, because uh, frankly, I, I don't have much on this other than Bluetooth. Not a lawyer here, but many jurisdictions make exceptions for two-way radio communications. There you go. In other words, you can't touch your cell phone, but using your radio is, is okay. Of course, you don't want to make adjustments to it while you're flying down the road. But picking up the mic and, and keying up and talking, you should be okay. But check your local laws to make sure. Yeah, I figured I'd have to figure something out with uh, voice activation or uh, jam a small keypad onto my wheel. But uh, no, I, I think what he's saying, what he's saying is that if there's a, so what he's saying is if there's an exception for two-way radio then you can use the PCT mic. You just have to make sure that it's it's appropriate for the city that you're in. You probably can't be diving into the menu settings, but you can you can definitely work a microphone if you want to. Comment? Uh, go ahead, comment. Uh, Michigan just passed some handheld or some some laws about that, and there's an explicit call out in Michigan laws for ham radio communications. So that is absolutely a thing. You should definitely check the rules. There you go. Yeah. Look into uh, that. We're in Minnesota here. So. Okay, yeah, that's but... not an answer to the, the question. The question is, look it up and find out if there is a ham radio exemption. The, the other thing is, too, you shouldn't be making a lot of changes anyway on 2 meter 440 while you're driving, and PTT is one button. Wait, I, I'm going to go a step further. If in Minnesota they're trying to pass a rule that does not have an exemption for two-way radio, you should contact the ARRL immediately and get the ARRL on this because they did not know about it, and they should be out there protecting ham radio uh, freedoms, if you will. What else do our fees go for? 100%. Like, uh, everybody... Everybody get into the habit of calling the ARRL. I really do want more people to call the ARRL on things like these. We need to be like bringing them into the fold. Let them work this out. That is what they're here for. If Minnesota is going to try and take away your, your two-way radio rights, let the ARRL handle it. That's their job. 
Jody okay. just posted I'm, I'm it in the chat. I'm looking at the rules, and it says... They're exempt! Ah, uh, oh, yeah. you son of a... Jody! Amateur radio, citizens band, and two-way radios are exempt. As always, Jody rolls in with the most pertinent information. You're good, man. You're good. You're good. Roll your radio. You got it. You're good. All right, who's next? Who has the next question? Go for it. Question. Uh, I saw the data. Go data. Uh, just real quick. Uh, I'm getting more into SDRs, uh, and I like Linux. Does anyone know of a good SDR program for Linux that does like the good filtering that Fedis does for like anons and things like that? Well, the the filtering is going to be uh by the radio. The radio is what's going to facilitate that. But if you go to the big list, big list of SDR PQ RX is what he wants. Yeah. It's the easiest one. What do you guys use on Linux? GQRX. There you go. GQRX. It's, it's, it's basically, it's basically yeah. like, uh, what is it, SDR play on Windows? It's, it's, that's, that's the same thing, but a little bit more it's powerful. It's probably... Already installed in your in your ham uh, menu. Oh Look yeah, ham radio. <laughs> have, have you ever heard of uh, Dragon OS? Yeah, uh, I have. I use it once or twice for a while. Yeah, so basically, it's it's just a uh, you know one of those flavors of Linux where mm -hmm. um, I think it's like LXQT or something um, like that. Yeah. Remember. And, uh, Originally, they like had or you could overlay it on Windows ninety five, and but you still had all the viruses. Well, uh, this is the, we're talking about Linux here. Um, yeah. So Dragon basically, OS on thirty. Yeah, Dragon OS, yeah, OS yeah. is a uh, a flavor of Linux where you basically get oh, yeah. literally everything that you're ever going to need for any kind of radio thing. Yes, and they they started off. Years ago, back in the nineties, whatever, you could overlay it. I don't believe we're talking about the, the Dragon OS. Yeah, is we, like within the last three years. No, it's been around for a while, but uh, oh, they all just right, all right, all right. different. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay. you, uh, Kevin let's, let's, Laughlin has a video on Dragon OS. Good. Let's move on. Uh, all right, what's the next question? So yeah, uh, I think it was D above him. Anybody have Can, the next? I, I got. Question? I got a question. Yeah, I don't you, you show D, up though. as D to me, so go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, what? So, what is the oh. best coax connector? And I know that's a broad question. And the joke is, there's so many stinking connectors out there. I was redoing some of my coax runs. Wait, 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 wait. Everybody's gonna scream right now. So just tell me what frequencies you're talking about. You H don't have to tell me the background. Just what? What's the frequency? Yeah, HF. Does it really matter? No, PL239 and SO2, they're all fine. They're fine. Uh, it, when you get into UHF, then you should look at type N connectors. Th that is where you're at. But So type N for HF would be just fine as well, right? It doesn't matter at it the lower frequency. It would be just fine. It would be just fine, but it's not needed. Well, so then what's the downfall? You're spending more money. So just the cost of the connectors being a little bit sure. higher. Yeah. So what what about like what about like mini UHF those smaller ones do those sure. matter? No, it depends no. on the frequency you're on. It depends uh, on the frequencies. So uh, it's running. How, coax much, how through, much power are you going to be running, dude? Uh, that's right now, that's a big question. 100 watts. Yeah, you're fine. You're, yeah, you're, you're fine. Two fifty nine S and all of them. And good. All of them and, and, and and mini UHF is on the back of the Sun SDR, so. They're, yeah. they're used on HF and and, and, HF. and and if you're talking about HF, your 10 meter loss between the three connectors is all of about a tenth of a dB. They don't matter. It only so, matters when mm. you really get up really high above uh, the, 440 and higher. The the reality yeah. is it doesn't matter. It really it, particularly right. at HF, it it really does not matter. And, it doesn't matter. And, and the best thing to do is just look at what's on the back of the radio and match it. Right, yeah, but yeah, so my choices came in when doing like runs into the house and stuff, um, and like what's easier to fish through a hole. And well, that's stuff a like different that. question. Wait, 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 that has nothing to do with the connector. That but it does though, because no, I have no, to. Uh, that is the composition of the coax. 
you can always find a, a proper connector for just about any coax you bring into your house. That is not true. So wh where are we going with this? What, what's okay, going sorry. On? Can you elaborate on that? Because I, yeah, I so, come... Okay. Oh, 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 so much. So much. Come so are you, are you doing LMR 400? Is that what you're trying to do? So I have to do LMR 400 down to 240 to get through an existing hole and then back up to 400. Why didn't you just oh. make a bigger hole? Wait, 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 wait. Why don't you make Rental. a bigger hole? Wait, 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 wait. You're you're telling me that the landlord is going to come in and say the diameter of that hole is slightly wider? No, it already exists. So make the hole wider. No, I can't do that. Why? Why are you talking to me like this? It, it sounds like I'm talking to my children. Like, no, I can't. No, I can't do this. No, I can't do well, this. I don't know what. Oh, what are you talking about? Why are we making this? Why are you bringing this to me? Why are you bringing this to me? I'm limited by what I can get in. It. I mean, you it's, could get a drill that could widen that hole, and you're done. What's the problem? It, it's a log home. I'm not drilling more holes. Why? Um, it, it could take like two seconds to drill a wire hole. You got a, You know a guy that has a drill that can do this. What's the I problem? have one myself. But so why are you doing this? Why? Wh wh you, wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, why no, are no, you? Wait, 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 wait. No, wait, no, no. Hold on. Why are you unloading your baggage with your landloader landlord on us? Like, what is this? Why? So well, okay, but well. So my the root of my question though is on the topic of connectors. Yeah, and and you guys answered it, and that it doesn't really matter, which is. Well, but it kind of does in the sense that like we did not give you information to go high to low to high again. That's basically what you're talking about. Is you want to go from LMR four hundred to something lower diameter to then higher diameter? You are making so much more work for yourself than just hog out that hole and do what you need to do to get your ham radio good, man. Get over all that other BS. Just hog it out and be done. Okay. Some of the renters back me up here. It's not that simple. It, well, it's it's also simple. worth just learning to crimp your own connections, too. Wait, like, wait, wait, stop, stop, stop. Wait, 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 wait. We're not even at crimping yet. What's the problem with hogging out the hole? Why, why are we still going back and forth? I'm not allowed to do it. I don't own the house. But he's not going to know if you if you make like a slightly more like millimeter wide like drill connection. Well, yeah, but we're talking like I got like four coax runs coming in. You personally do. Yeah. But this one particular one has to go through a bulkhead. No, is that a cable vision hole that you're just going to pull out the wire and shove your own in? Is that what you're trying to do? Yeah, it was existing infrastructure, and I'm just kind of adapting it for, for my own cable runs. And, it, and I agree, for just one cable, it's not that big of a difference. But I got an HF antenna. I got a couple, you know, higher frequency receive antennas. And, you know. So, so are you asking us the best way to go from higher diameter coax to lower diameter coax to then also higher diameter to coax? In well, I didn't know that made a difference. I thought it was all in the connector, which is it, why it I was does, asking. It does to a point when you start introducing all these like chaos points. Like if you think of chaos points, right? Uh, turbulence, a rock in the stream of life going downhill. If you go from like a higher uh diameter to a lower diameter yeah sure there's going to be problems and also any any like inherent difficulties that existed on that coax you got around you'd have to attribute to that point that failure point right so if you put a if you put an amplifier on that coax line that couldn't handle that lower diameter then then yeah, that that would be a, a failure point, and the the fact that it's bored through some critical part of your home, then then yeah, that that would be something to consider. If this is all one hundred watt radios, then yeah, all this is moot. Dial it down, dial it up, go across the board. Nobody cares. If you're amping, I mean, I would it, like to get an amplifier someday. So if that does matter, then I would, you should I would... you should bore it out and then do okay. Can I can I tell you about the late night Saturday acquisition? This is a thing we do where we don't want anyone to know what we're, we're uh, going to do, but we prepare everything, and then we just run in and do it really fast, and then it's done. And so if you're talking about boring out LMR from a lower diameter to LMR 400, just bore it out and be done with it. You, start, you already have the tools. Like, what's the problem? It almost sounds like you're spiting the landlord for not letting you ham radio. Just bore it out. Be done with it. Do it. 
do it. I give you permission. There you go. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm blessing you. I throw holy water at the camera. You're good. Do it. I no appreciate your authority in this that, matter. Actually, wait, 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 wait. You have you have better than me. Wait, you have better than me at this point. The smoke and ape has said, drill that hole, son. But so, like, how is this wait, different? Wait, 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 than wait, wait, like... wait, 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 wait. Drill that hole, son. There you go. There it is. I disagree. Won't stack and all those connectors also create like more loss too in the line? In how the many line? connectors are we talking? How many connectors? Well, so it comes to the house, steps down, and then steps back up, and then goes to the radio. So two, who did two, all that? Two sets what, of what? connectors, no big deal. Wait, this is this is your radio. This is your antenna. Why are we stepping down, stepping up? Why are we doing all this stuff? To to get into the to this get is not into Joe the Jackson. House. Why are we stepping out at all? Like just just make it one single run and then be done with it. What's the problem? Like well, I said, if you're worried about drilling that hole, you just make your own cables too. Like consider that. Comment. Well, so that's so that's my question, and and this kind of goes down to the theory of people step down to get inside all the time. That's like the MFJ window thingy that slims down to get yeah. through a window jam. Yeah, to to be one hundred watts, but you just said I want to then apply an amp to this. You ain't doing a hundred watts on that window pass through. Well, you can't do more than a hundred watts on that window pass through. You're not amping that. So then, is there is there a power limit for two forty? Well, there's also a yes. loss. There, there's also a receiver loss r ratio, right? So if, if you want the best possible receiver, like receive capability, you want LMR 400 all the way back to your radio, all the way back, all the way to the connector, all the way. If so you like, want, you, so, sorry, like the ahead, loss calculator, ahead. for example, that was just posted goes over distance. So like if you put LMR 240 for three feet, the loss is like nothing. So, so, Okay. I want to I want to to add the like uh, your your uncle shortwave listener dude. So here's the problem, right? All of this stuff is you're trying to figure out a way to transmit, like that. That's what you're doing right now, right? The reality is, is what you should be doing is preserving your receive capability. That's the best thing that you could be doing right now. Everything you should be doing is about receive capability. From my point of view. Going up and down and all these things on coax, sure, all of that will still allow you to transmit. But the best thing you could do is just create a, a straight line, make everything simple, and as short as possible to get you receiving and, and make your receiver as good as possible. That That's my goal, right? That That's what I'm aiming for. You can do all this other business, but you're literally talking about a drill bit. Like, wh why can't we just do it? Why? Did you tell me? Can you articulate? I mean, just as being a renter my whole life, I try not to make permanent changes to where I live. But That's they won't know. It. They won't know. They literally will not know if the, the if the diameter's three millimeters wider. Like, what does it matter? Open it up with like a no, uh, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Stop. I want to hear him. I want to hear him reply. Well, that's just. I mean, it's just what I've been saying. It's just being respectful of the place I live. Have you asked Comment. permission? Well, yeah, why don't you ask permission then if you care that much about it? I mean, I didn't know it was this big of a deal. It's riling you up so much. And to me, it didn't seem like that big of a deal just to step it down for a couple feet. Well, then do it. Why are you asking me? Then you know how to do it. Well, so because my question is, is when I'm custom doing all these cables, I get analysis paralysis over the type of connectors. And that was my original question. Is yeah, because, okay, matter? so, okay, all right, all right. So then you're coming back to me saying, I don't know if all these connectors is going to be a good thing. Okay, here's the answer. It's probably fine. Here's, there's your answer. It's probably fine. Nobody, nobody, really, nobody cares. really cares. But you're spending Which a lot is, of time and money BSing around just boring out a hole and being done with it. I mean, that's fine, but also experimenting and learning how to do connectors, which I didn't Go know ahead, how to make do. make a video about it. We would all like to see it. Make a YouTube video about it. This is probably going to be a good video. Do it. I mean, if I made a YouTube video and I did it wrong, I get a lot of feedback. That's for sure. No, I, I, you're not going to. Okay. By the way, everything we're talking about right now, this is all just us. Uh, what I call magazine racing. This is when like we also used to open up a uh, 1990s hot rod magazine. We'd be like, oh, the Corvette's uh, half a second faster in the quarter mile versus the Mustang SVT Cobra. None of us drove any of those cars, so we really don't know what the hell we're talking about. We're all magazine racing like what's going to happen. There's a hypothetical of like, yes, it will antenna, but 
until you actually prove what it does, then you know we're we're just all we're all just you know hanging out. But so, like on your comment on the receivability, so I used to have what was that? Um, so I used to have two forty or thinner going from my transmitter to my fan dipole, and I thought my fan dipole had a lot better tuning capability than it actually does because now I ran LMR four hundred for ninety eight percent of that run, and now I realized it only tuned because the coax had a lot of loss in it, or at least more than what I have now. Uh, okay. um, Cause like my fan dipole doesn't tune up on 17 meters. It used to, <laughs> but now that I'm running better coax to it, the built-in ICOM tuner doesn't like it anymore. Okay. So based on that, what I changed the run to is better than what was there before. Even though I shrink it down to get into the house, I'm still getting more power out to the antenna based on how the tuner is behaving, unless I'm wrong um, in my assumption. But I feel it, but it's getting better um, than it was before. I was just confused on like the difference, you know, like for example, the 9700, how they have the PL259 for one frequency and an end connector for another. Why don't they just use the same for, you know, all of them? It's loss. It's loss related. Uh, and end okay. connector is, is much more expensive generally. Uh, UHF connectors take you all the way down to HF, which is the pretty much standard. Uh, VHF is fine with the uh, with the UHF connector. The, the reality. So, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll so go ahead. so it's weighing the cost with the loss. Sure. Yeah. Not just that. Well, yes. It, it well, okay. Type in has oh, built-in gas. If you if you're talking it about It's great here wait, in the freezing land. Wait, if you're talking about Icom, yes. Any radio manufacturer is going to try and make it like to the cheaper side if they can. Like, well, okay, think about it. At any time, any radio manufacturer could just say, "We're all going type N, and that's going to be the norm." They're not doing that though. That they, they stick to UHF connectors for most things, and they only go to to you know type N connectors when they have to, and SMA, and you know all those other things, right? So so keep that in mind. And by the way, and I'll end it with this. Sorry for taking so much time. That no, review that question. you did this was a good question. That that review that you did for that kit, where you can go from like anything to anything, that thing is awesome. I love it. And I, I, I oh gosh, I, I feel like I came too hard at you. So I, I I'm uh, sorry. I will apologize if I came too hard at you. But at the same time, no, it's I, all I am, good. It's late I, night I, chat. I, I am, I am empowering you to just drill a hole, just bore it out, and be done with it. We, we probably talked, we probably talked too much on just empowering you to just bore the hole out and be done with it. Think about it. Think about it. Like if the landlord already expects that you're going to have a hole, like a, a wire through there, he's not going to know if it's like a couple of millimeters wider. Come on. The, think, the, really? thing, the thing is, though, is that the scale is going to tip at some point. And I already have a fan dipole in my backyard on 80 meters. I'm going to push my luck what at scale? some point. What scale? What scale is going to tip? What, of what what's allowed? Of what I can do before it's like, you know what? You're doing kind of a lot. Wait, 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 wait. So. Okay, so hear me out. Hear me out. You have a hole through a thing that has connectors that are wider than that hole. Way wider. Way wider. Yeah. Yeah. So the fact that the hole that the thing is going through is subtly wider than the, the connectors that are way wider. No one knows. No one knows. Like, no, no one knows this. No one is going to do this. Please. Please get on board with this, right? Please, please. Who says the spectrum guy didn't accidentally drill it out a little bit wider? Please. I was just going to pause to say that, too. You never know. You could just blame it on the spectrum guy, honestly. Please. Right? Hey. Think about the connectors that already exist in the hole that is already there. The connectors are three times as wide than the hole that is already there. No one cares. No All right, well, cares. if I'm getting kicked out, I'm moving in with one of y'all. Just drill, baby, drill. Uh, but hear me out, right? You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I got it. Thank now, you. So at the same time, do this at a time the landlord's not coming over because that's a whole different thing. If you get, like, caught while you're hogging out a hole, that's a whole different problem. You never want to get, ho like, caught hogging out a hole. Let me just say that right up front. With that I said— agree. 
you're good. You're good. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. All right. Uh, let's see. K zero B L U Chris. Question, please. Are you on voice? Go for it. If you are. Go ahead. Take it. I had a question. Well, multicast will get you, but uh, K zero or K O B. No, it's K zero B L U. Chris had a comment or he said question, but he's not in the after chat. So go ahead, question. Question. Well, I was listening to that there ham radio crash course podcast, and you mentioned Leah that there's a ham radio event up at the Pacific Northwest. Okay. What event was that? Uh, it's Pacificon, everybody. That's coming up real soon. I would venture a guess that it's your fourth largest ham radio event of the year. Pacificon. Good stuff. Has, good. Hasn't Pacificon already passed? Isn't there a Ham Radio Adventures Pacific Beach adventure going on? Oh, well, no, go ahead. Stop stop baiting me then. Go ahead. No, wait, Pacificon, was it Was it this weekend? Did I no, miss it? Pacificon, no, Pacificon is October 20th through 21st yeah, in San Ramon, okay. California. All right, go ahead. Stop baiting me. Just go ahead. Do your plug. That's fine. Hello. Do you, Propagation. Well, I thought Pacificon had already passed, but I was going to say October 11th through 16th, there is a uh, Ham Radio Adventures ad adventure going on up at Pacific Beach, and it's a uh, it's going to be a good time. Is there a website that we could plug that I will do? HamRadioAdventures.com. Ham go on there. You can look up the uh, it, the information on the adventure itself. It's up at Pacific Beach. We rent out some houses. We have a lot of hams involved. And it's five days of ham radio good times. Ham radio adventures. There you go. And you have a thing. Oh. Hello. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. When's the event now? Because there it is. Oh, wait. There it is. Pacific Beach 2023. They got Pico Balloons, Solar Eclipse Cuso Party. This is like a full week long, a week long event from October 11th through the 16th. Should be a member, though, to be able to, uh, to capitalize on that. So there you go. I'll, I will drop the link in the uh, live stream chat. Question. Go ahead, question. So I don't want to buy several links of coax. How bad is it to have it coiled trying to do HF? It depends like on Like I how... want to buy the longest link that I need and then have maybe some of it coiled some of the time. How, how much coils are we talking about? Uh, maybe 20 feet. It's not great. You you will get some loss from that, but um, it's probably fine. So it's doable until I can like get yeah. multiple. Yeah. Oh no, it's it, well, your your noise limit or or your noise level of all the other RF garbage that's around you is way more important than the length of your coax. If if you take my point of view. Okay. Yeah. Question? Go ahead, question. This is Chris, finally. I'm going out to New Mexico for the open love house New events Mexico. at Los Alamos. Oh, I love I Alamo love it. Gordo. Yeah. And I'm going to be bringing my KX3 with two or three antennas to do some POTA activations. Okay. I came across an interesting quirk of the POTA rules in that the National Park Service combines Manhattan Project sites into one code, K4376. Um, I did if you not look know on the this. POTA app, I did not know this. Actually, this is actually fascinating. Why? Why the distinction? The, why the distinction? Because they don't differentiate between Hanford, Los Alamos, 
and Oak Ridge. How close are they? At, How close are they? They're in different states. Washington State versus New Mexico versus oh, that's, Tennessee. That's vastly different. What? Why? That's weird. Because on the NPS site, they combined them all into the Manhattan Project historical site. But when you activate, you activate for one POTA site, even if it's three different differential, different geographical sites. And since there are only two times per year that you can visit the Trinity site at Alamogordo, they don't even include that. Now, there's a nice trip that you can take through Los Alamos Historical Society that lets you come into Los Alamos and then on the Friday and Saturday beforehand, you take a trip down to Alamogordo to go to the Trinity site, then you come back the next day to go to Los Alamos National Labs where you have an open house to go behind the wire fence. Okay. Normally, you don't. You have to have security clearance. Now, the old sites like Fuller Lodge and Oppenheimer's House, those are available and you can look at next to the Los Alamos historical site. But I thought it would be kind of cool to take my ham radio stuff down there and try and activate these. And I'll probably activate them and then argue with the POTA people, but it's kind of weird that you don't have that is kind of weird three different four different poda sites that you can activate since they're in totally different geographical locations and i i don't know the rules of poda that well and i've joined discord but um the the signal to noise ratio is low there oh yeah yeah it's it's Super low because there's nothing out there. Can I ask a question? Well, I, I would like to it, uh, it, about this topic. This, oh, yeah, this please go talk ahead. About. Yeah, so I understand on the POTA side, maybe I, I, I actually don't understand it, it seems ridiculous, but um, it would seem like activating a historic site like the Trinity site would be totally different than Los Alamos. than um, Washington, and maybe I'm just uh, speaking to a choir here, but it seems crazy that they're all like count the same. If um, you go to the NPS this... site, yeah, wait, 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 wait. Uh, who has a comment? Are they POTA involved by Frank, chance? Frank, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Frank, please go ahead, yeah. please, please. Uh, Kim does make a good point on this, and this is what I was going to bring up. It's sort of like a trail for POTA. They can go through different states, but it still counts as one park. So that's why it's, you know, three, three or four different states and locations, but it's one park. Oh, it's kind of like the PCT, it. the Pacific yeah. Crest Trail or something like that. It, exactly. Yeah. So you yeah, just you just happen to be on the trail. atomic trail of uh, people that were that were making big bombs. My question is, how do I make my activations visible? And it's differentiate them from, you know, what I'm doing at Los Alamos versus Alamogordo versus going out to Oak Ridge. On your, if you're, if you have internet and you're spotting on uh, Poda.app, you can put it in the comment section. You know, I am at this location on, at this park. I will be logging on the Poda app. After I get to an internet source, I do not have a cell phone for internet access 24-7. Here's the fun thing about it. You can set it up ahead of time. So say you know you're going to be there, let's say, September 10th from 9 a.m. UTC to 12 p.m. UTC. You can set that up ahead of time and in the comments go, I'm at Sierra Gorda or I'm at Los Alamos. And you can set up multiple different activations. So you can say, oh, I'm at place A from 9 to 12. I'm at place B from 1 to 3, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Is there a good reference 
for POTA through the AWRL or POTA.parks on the air that is on paper. I l I'm a old guy and I like the idea of not necessarily relying on internet all the time. That I do not know. Uh, I, I that, actually, that would be my that would be my next book for Ward Silver. So, Chris, I have a question. So, one of those locations for the Poda, did you say you have to have a security clearance to be able to go on the base or on location? Normally, you would. There are two times per year where they have open house, um, and you just need a government driver's license. Uh, or, what is Passport. location? What is the location? Trinity site, Alamogordo. Oh, Gordo. Trinity site. Oh, so that's north of Las Cruces, right? Yeah. And the other you site only, would be like, Los Alamos. Wait, wait. Yeah, so Trinity civilians County can only go there twice a year? That's it? It's, that's it's, right. It's, it's locked behind a gate. Yeah, the site's it's still a uh, restricted site, except for uh, twice a year. There are the so many people talking open. right now. There are so many people talking. I just want to hear the, like, so uh, you you can Trinity only go site, twice a year, and, and what are those months or, or times of the year? October and March. But if you had a clearance, like if it was just a guy that had a clearance and say, like, I want to go there. And they'll let you go, and like probably not. Well, you not, can get right? out on the range, but you can't with a DOD cat card. But you can't get necessarily out to the specific site. It's behind additional fencing. I love this. I love it. Okay. Okay. I mean, you did your um, California Island activation, mm -hmm. and I thought this would be kind of cool. I might set up the KX3 outside the inner fence because uh, if I'm going to get 10 activations, it may take longer than an hour. And it may take more than one attempt at this. So uh, it, I kind of got to plan this out. There's actually, uh, I, I really like the concept of being the guy that goes to really rare locations that you can't, like you physically can't go because I, I actually can go to a lot of locations if I want to. Uh, this, I think, is beyond my scope. <laughs> so I'm actually kind of interested to see how one could actually go to Trinity. This, this... I, I will communicate with you offline. Yeah, if you could. Like, I, I, detail. Yeah, I, I, I might be able to work something. That That's uh, fantastic. I would love that because I, I have been, I, I've technically been, been to the trinity site but not like you know to it right to to the operating space that i would like to be if i guess you could uh you could say that check out radioactive drew and radioactive drew oh i like the name on youtube that's, that's a good name that's a good name Jamscan posted that in live stream oh is this it oh here we go oh radioactive drew oh my goodness how many views does he get on this Oh, we got 3 million views? Holy crap! Oh, we're subscribing right now. That was a good video. I saw was, it. He did just he also... not to pick up any Trinitite. Right, we're going we're gonna to pause it because uh, I'm not going to steal his thunder. I'm going to drop the link for everybody to go check out his video. Uh, but I am going to watch Radioactive Drew. I've I've watched his channel three multiple times. million views, and he only oh, has yeah. sixty seven thousand subscribers. That's crazy. He went big, freaking like oh my gosh, Oppenheimer. He went he, big, Oppenheimer. He went big viral, and let's see. Oh, he's blowing up right now. Oh, he's blowing up big. I'm pretty sure, dude. Oh, his so videos are so spy fi. It's crazy. Look at this guy. Uranium. Oh yeah, he's going hard off of Heimer. Oh, it's awesome. Look at this. Dude. Look at his yeah. look, his thumbnails are awesome. Look at this. Oh man, he's killing it right now. He's having a great time. Uranium did, plates. Oh, this is super cool. Did he have a Chernobyl video? Like where he actually went through the zone? No, that's no. Bio Nerd. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, no, so I he, watch. When he I says, watch all these guys. When he says radio nerd, he's not actually like a ham radio guy. He's just a 
radioactive nerd. Radioactive, like uh. Okay, so gamma yeah. rays are the best rays. Yeah, he he he's operating at a higher frequency than we are. We can say that. There's an interest. That's There's cool. An though. Interesting oh, his channel instrument. had a big glow up. Oh my god! Like it went from. So he was doing, yeah, pretty like similar to mine at a certain point, and then he went to the Trinity site, and it went to three million views, and then he just popped off. 400, 1.6, 51. Oh, yeah. This guy, he, he figured out what the... Oh, look at his thumbnails. He figured out what the, the algorithm was and just dialed in. That's cool. That's like hey, cool Josh, YouTube I right got a there. Question. Yeah, go for it, man. Sorry to be impatient. My wife rolled the car many times, and uh, I'm 27. Wait, wait, wait. So, your, your your phone's dying pretty hard. Did you just say your wife rolled her car multiple times? Yeah, she uh, was coming home last oh. week. So paper you, and, uh, you had a really bad. It actually went your cell phone. End. Your cell phone we're signal. Is, your cell phone signal is really hard to copy right now. You're, you're you're cutting in and out. I can't I can't really copy you right now. Can you you could try and find a better space? Is there any better? Yeah, uh, well, maybe go for it. Try. Okay. Well, you know, I'm wiped out. I'm disabled too, so it's like the blind leading the blind here. But we'll get by. Um, guy did find trade me a metal detector I don't use for an FT70D, so that made me smile today. And you are definitely the king of HTs, so. I've got the FT70D, some extra batteries, and a signal stick. Um, I've got to try to make the best of all that. And can I do 20 miles on that, or do I need to get some uh, HT uh, antenna super juice? 20, 20 miles to a repeater or 20 miles simplex? Both. Neither. Okay, so so twenty miles to a repeater usually implies a, a, a antenna that's high up in the air that uh, you talk up to. So twenty miles to a repeater, hell yeah, you can you can do that all day. If you're talking twenty miles to a guy that's on the ground in their in their Pontiac Trans Am, probably not. That's probably not going to be enough to be able to talk to them. I've 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 experimented well, it with is, that. Uh, I've done it, actually. That's not a question of I've done it. It's a question: Can I do it consistently? Yeah, you that's can. That's the point. It's it's the antenna you use that that stick. Okay, go that ahead. What's the antenna? Water. What's the antenna? What's the antenna? Antenna here? is a is a is an RH six six zero S, and they're about twelve bucks on AliExpress. They're a pull. It's this this would be VHF, right? Because he has the same. He has the same radio I do, the FT seventy D, correct? Uh, I think yeah, so. If you could drop that in the chat for the yeah, link, if you I have could a drop that memory. in the chat, so that would be that. great. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it works pretty good at VHF. The match isn't too bad. Uh, the match isn't as good as uh, in the UHF, but it's still okay. And and it's a the beauty of it is that even if you don't want the full length, because it's like a half a half wavelength or something when you pull it out. Uh, even if you collapse it, the SWR isn't bad enough that you can actually use it if you don't want to bring it out to the people who are close by, but you can always yank a thing out to full length. And uh, it, it actually works quite well. well drop the impressed. link. Drop the link. I want to see this now. I will. I wild. will drop That's the link. Crazy. And then they come in the both types of feeds. So you may need a little kind of AFT. I think you have to file the edges of it slightly so it screws in better, but that's just typical. So back antenna. to the uh, FT Anyways, I'll drop uh, 70D. Link. Um, Josh, do you uh, have any uh, um, tweaks as far as, you know, transmit for, you know, digital and analog uh, that you found? That just, uh, really yeah, if I, if I can. Uh, oh. The FT70D, the best thing you can do is have extra batteries. Th that radio uh, seems to want to consume a lot of batteries. So... The best thing you can do is have a capability to either swap the battery out or uh, tap in a feed line to to recharge it. I will say, 
it doesn't matter what handheld you're running. If you can run a hand like a, a half wave, two meter antenna, if you want to get out, that's going to be the, your best bet. Period. And uh, Matt already is uh, dropping the link. Uh, no, no, it was uh, Ghostman. Ghostman is already talking about the MFJ Long Ranger, which is the best antenna I've ever tested. That would be my tip. That would be really useful. Cause right now, I'm you know I'm just not getting any big antennas up in the air until I can uh, get one of our like ham radio dude to come out here and help me. He's a neighbor. Oh, cool. Well, okay. So if I could, and and to uh, let's let's respect the ham radio dude's time. Do the best you can on your own. Like try and figure out as much of the things as you can on your own. It's not his job to like fix your problems. You should no. Do, I'm I'm like, pretty seasoned. As... I just need somebody who can reach over ham because of my disability and shoot a line over a tree for me. And then I'll give him a beer okay. and a cigar and uh, okay, all right, give all right. him dog go. a whole bunch of nice treats. And and dude's a cool guy because he he really does value the like the importance of like Elmering and and helping people. Dude, dude is uh I I think from what I've seen of of dude it, is that he really does listen to people explain what the problem is and then try and help them to the best of his ability and i i think he's he's been doing a good job i really like ham radio dude every time i get to hang out with sean he's always a really solid dude it's oh, very he, good that he, he has, has dude a, in his name because they keep spirit. saying dude so yeah true spirit of, of uh Elmer for him uh mm -hmm. he can't be asked me he's uh, the real deal all right so i got a couple more questions in me and then i'm gonna wrap things up and hang out with the family we might even watch a movie uh oh wait you know what i didn't i didn't go off the rails yet i i gotta no, go off the rails you didn't i gotta go off the rails really hard okay who likes like who grew up watching bruce lee movies like, please enter the dragon. Everyone. Right. Mm -hmm. Everyone. Everyone. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was alive when they were actually released. Okay. okay. So I, I am going to give you the the spiritual successor of the Bruce Lee movies. How many of you who have seen on Bach, like the, 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 the Thai, uh, Muay Thai fighting on Bach? Have you seen that? Multiple sequels. Okay. Great series. Okay. Have you heard of The Raid? The Raid Redemption. Have you heard of that before? Anyone? Where, uh, no, but where, you know, where, where is it at? Uh, Netflix? You, you might have to go, like, you might have to pay to, to, to copy, like, to rent this. This is one of like okay okay wait 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 oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh. wait wait okay so here's he, here's here's who I want to watch this mm -hmm. who saw and loved the movie dread ah yes you saw the minty thing on it okay okay so if you liked the movie dread you will love wait, like judge dread no, the the uh, second one, the one that was not was still not Sylvester Stallone. Not Stallone. Yes, the the, uh, the, the, the the real one. Keith, Carl Urban. Carl Urban. Yeah, yeah, yeah Dodd. The yep, real yep, Urban. One. So Thank good, you, yes. Dodd. So Thank good. you, Dodd. Thank you, Dodd. Okay, so agreed. It it feels like that, but it's like Muay Thai mm -hmm. self defense fighting. It's called The Raid Redemption. And then there is a, another movie called The Raid 2. And The Raid 2 is supposed to be even better than mm -hmm. The First Raid. And if you like martial arts videos, this is the one you might want to see. You, you, you probably should see this. And probably by the way, be. Dread did it first. Uh, yes, Dread existed before uh, The Raid Redemption. Yeah, it he just did. took them longer to do their post uh Post, uh, but but know, it feels editing, it, it feels so similar. When I yeah. was watching the Raid Redemption, I was like, "Oh, this feels like 
did did Dread copy them? But no, Dread did not mm. copy them. Dread uh, started eight it, weeks before they did. Yeah, they so they were not they were not perturbated by anyone. It was it, they were on their own thing. It is very good. It's not the same. Mm. It's not the same as as Dread. Dread is like peak action, like peak. Like Dread is one of my favorite action movies. Period. It it is like the successor to not successor, but like it's on the same part like uh, platform as as uh, Die Hard. That's where I put mm-hmm. Dread. Ah, this is really good. So it feels like totally different genre, but like it feels like it's still compared to it. like Ipmon. Oh no! So Ipmon is totally different. Okay, so oh boy. Sorry, I'm, I'm I, I don't know these movies, so I'm trying to no, figure this, out. No, this is a this basis. is a really good question. Uh, so, uh, the the raid redemption feels like uh, uh, dread. Ipman, mm-hmm. Ip, Ipman is uh the the wing. Okay, God, I don't want to. I'm trying to wrap up the show. Wing Chun, w- w- Wing Chun. I'm trying to wrap up the show a little bit, but uh, okay. So in my family, Kundo. Uh, no, no, no. So Ip Man is a hundred percent Wing Chun. Wing Chun is one of the mothership like uh martial arts that uh Bruce Lee learned that formula that was a part of uh Jeet Kune Do. Jeet Kune Do included boxing and or Chinese boxing and Wing Chun and uh there was another form I don't really remember. In uh some argue that the Philippine art of a screma is also involved, but everybody, it doesn't matter. So uh, Ipman is entirely Wing Chun, which I don't know how to explain Wing Chun when you can only see this much of me. But the the big thing about Wing Chun, if you watch Ipman, that everything is center lined. There's no, there's not a lot of like let's get on the ground and fight like they do in. Uh, in jujitsu or anything like that, or even Filipino martial arts, it's all this like poppy, locky, pull hands, pop, 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 pop. Like that's that's like what Wing Chun does. Uh, totally. Ah, anyway, I'm I'm not gonna say anything more. That's it. But uh, Jeet Kune Do was subtly based. A part of it, uh, Wing Chun is involved. There you go. I'm done. I'm sorry, Jimmy. They're doing a raid three, by the way. He's just asking a question because I'm. They're doing a raid three. They're doing a raid three. Yeah, they're. It's on Uh, Netflix. Yep. Yep. For that, yeah. Chat. Well. Uh, I guess that's it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, the raid redemption is on Netflix, so. Um, uh, but the raid two is the best one, so go watch. And, and it's it's also on Netflix. Is it really? Yeah. Then why did yeah. I pay for it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 there. One comment for you. Oh wait wait wait. K seven AGE is right now on uh, FT eight. Guys, go get K seven AGE. Randy, he's on uh, FT eight right now. He is negative twelve to me. I'm not even pointing at him. Oh, there's like a Yoda. CQ uh, Yoda? Just, uh... Or Voda. Good, good. Um, tonight, when your wife ain't looking or nothing, uh, just take a moment and appreciate her and all that she is and, and is for you. And uh, I pray for her safety because you never know when something bad can happen. Up in your whole world. Craig, you're, you were cutting out really bad. I didn't hear any of that. I was just saying uh, tonight, take a moment and be thankful for your wife. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Josh, you tried to go off the rails and it wasn't that off the rails. What, the raid? The raid? That I mean, No, that's, that's, not- that's, right, on, that's right on point, man. But yeah. from Ham Radio? Ah, this after chat. Who cares? Yeah, le- this is this is late after chat after the ham radio ends. This, we we always go there. This is nerdery, man. Like, uh, no, if you want to talk about nerdery, I so I camp for two days, 
because oh, I was going to go. You were camping. To... You were you were doing yeah. camping. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's that's, that's why I was doing POTA. So nice, nice. No, I went I went up there to go to the Michigan Renaissance Fair. I've never yeah. been to a Renaissance Fair before. Well, their website sucks, and and my girlfriend is very much a planner, and she was like, it's like. Okay, they're they're open through the weekend on 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 Labor Day, and they had three days posted. We didn't bother to look at the calendar. They didn't say the date names; they just said the dates. And we're like, well, clearly that means Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right? So <laughs> we got up there late Thursday night, and we wanted to go to the fair on Friday. And we showed up, and nobody is parked out there. No, not Come Friday. To find out. Yeah, yeah. Come to find out, it's open Saturday, Sunday, Monday for Labor Day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I missed it. I had to come back. I had to come back home today for a family we- thing. Weekends only because those people that dress up like that are only available on the weekends. Sorry. Well, they so fortunately she she her son and a couple of his friends got to check it out today, but I I, I, I wasn't able to make it because I had to I had to come back to the other side of the state, back home here ish, um, and I miss that. But anyway, what I'm mm-hmm. saying is, after chat is for all nerdery. And I went I hope to so. the other side of the state for yeah. nerdery, mm-hmm. so that's that's how I bring it in. There. Well, before mm-hmm. before I go, uh, I think uh, a lot of people saw my links or comments on the 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 SOG uh, multi tool. I want to I'm going to pull this up really fast. So, okay, I don't care if you buy this. I really don't care. You you don't have to buy this on Amazon. But uh, so here is. Those are the two different sizes for the uh, the multi tools. So the SOG, the Power Might, that's the uh, folded size, and that's the Leatherman P4. I I have to see the uh, Phillips head screwdriver. Yeah. Okay. So that's because the, there's only one style I will buy. Those flat flattened and on either side suck. And I will not buy well, you, multi tool you, with that in it. You, you'll never get you'll never get a standalone bit on the P4 because I I took the bit out of it. Like that's it's a, it has a bit driver, so you have to you have oh, to okay. put that in it. No, but, that uh, I, I, that's okay. The, those ones with those Phillips screwdrivers where it's flattened on either side, like a lot of the waves. The right, only one go, that Don. I Don, there you go. Uh-huh. I, I'm not seeing it yet, but it actually has. It's small. It's small, but it has a, a Phillips. It's oh, okay, actually, yeah. It's yeah, actually that's a three rounded one. It's, You're it's, right, right. It's not, it's not flat. It is three dimensional. Right. Yeah, you know what I mean, right? Oh, yeah. A lot of the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely. The, only the the there's one Leatherman now that only that has that. All the rest of them have gone to that flattened crap. Now I won't but, buy them anymore. But just so everybody understands the uh, the difference, right? So, I mean. Like as far as handheld uh, micro tools go, mm-hmm. a a lot of what you need for if you're doing a poda or whatever, you can do with this, mm-hmm. and it's small. That's the thing that like I I don't think I don't think people fully understand. Like if you have to crimp something in the field, you don't have to take a full size. It's actually pretty comparable. Which Leatherman uh, is that? that you uh, have? That's the uh, that's the P4. It's the free. Oh, okay. Free. I don't... I was wondering because my uh, wave doesn't Leatherman look that big. Crimp, like you know, cable, cable. Well, it also has a uh, a bit holder on the on the butt end of it. If you fold it down, that will hold it. And then if you flip it over, so it actually does have a crimper mm-hmm. um, on the little anvils right there. So for what you're paying for for thirty bucks, it's it's actually a pretty good unit. I'm not mm. trying to sell you on this. I'm just letting you know that it's available, mm. and it hasn't been it hasn't been this cheap in over it, it, like COVID times. This is the cheap it's been like for a lo- very long, long time. So that I'll mention that. Now, if you do want a Leatherman, the the P4 is probably my favorite. But uh, mm. that's yeah, that's a whole. Oh yeah, it's Josh the rebar. Did. The, the rebar is the only Leatherman I'll buy. No, you. no, this one's even better than that. I like this. The free. Yeah, it, as long as it has the re- rounded screwdriver, I'm fine. No, you got Josh, bits. Yeah. Josh. No, uh, I don't like those. Josh, did you happen to check out the tool bag that ACK had at Huntsville? I don't know if you would have been uh, able to I or don't not. I think but so. 
don't think so. He's got he's got like that kind of Leatherman mixed in with a whole, he's got like a full ratchet set. Every tool you mm. would ever possibly imagine compress it to this like tiny bag. Oh yeah, that, no, 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 no. okay, okay. ACK. All right. So here we ACK. go. Here we go. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Mm. Here we go. Smart, so this smart, is this is Smart Jason, as some people call him. Smart Jason. Smart Jason. Even what? Jason. Even the other Jason <laughs> called him that. The smaller one. So, oh, dude, Joe, Jason's smart as hell, dude. I love yeah. talking to that guy. So here, here's my here's my Leatherman, and here's the ratchet driver that lives on the side of it. And so if you pop this mm. out, right? So then you pop out this part, and then this goes in there, and now it's a fully ratcheting head. Yeah. Now, the Leatherman Wave that I have from the 90s actually has that ability as well. And I have the kit for it. Yes. It was a separately purchased kit that did the same thing. Yeah, because the end of the wave actually had that cut that had that spot that you could you could yeah, connect it. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. I have that. I have that uh, wave actually. I've been a mm -hmm. uh, I've been a Leatherman fan five ever, five ever. Um, but yeah, me yeah, too. So you 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 would just uh, you'd have to carry the flats. Uh, my holster but, has the flat points on it. The flat, the flat bits. That's the problem. You could, you could run flat bits, or you can run full size bits, and then you could, you could do the Leatherman stuff on it. Mm -hmm. like, it yeah, I. The, my my use of them has always been to work on servers and PCs. Right. And the, the having that screwdriver, exactly that screwdriver, has fit every single screw I've ever had to use on a server. Yeah. It just works. And so that's why those flat ones will not will not do it. Uh, and I would rather have a screwdriver in there than have to have a bit set. Yeah. So it, it literally took me taking You're a one hundred and fifty dollar. Right, Josh? Yeah, it's a P four, but it's a P four that I ripped out half of the bits on one side to put the the bit holder on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I literally made my favorite my favorite multi tool is a is a tool that I went in and modified the hell out of. Uh, the smaller tool. Oh my god. Okay, so I, I appreciate everybody asking me questions on this. We'll we'll answer all of them before we wrap this up. So if if you want to know about the smaller one, that is the Sog Power Might or something Pico Might or something like that. Uh, the link is literally on this uh, chat stream. So it's a entirely edc multi-tool like you can edc the crap out of it it the link that is in the the show notes or the the chat room the pin chat is the is the one the the actual head on the pliers is huge okay so that, that's that now uh the the leatherman free p4 i would not necessarily recommend this straight up i would not Unless you do the modification for the bit acceptor that's on the side. So I took out, like, I think two or three bits to put in this bit holder. And the bit holder can take full-size bits or it can take slotted bits. And for slotted bits, I have the, the ratcheting bit that you've already seen, right? And so then I have another flat pack Kadura, you know, sheath thing that has like uh, two flat packs of like eight bits a piece. That is what I carry with this. Like, so I carry this on my person now. This is now the solution to many of my problems. Like a fishing multi tool, this is what I'm taking. This is a whole different ball of wax, like bits and all that other BS. Like, that. that's what I'm, I'm doing that with this. Like, that's a whole nother animal. So, there you go. Oh, I just broke it off. Oh, my kid. All right. So let me tell you the story about this. I bought this. Uh, I bought this. I bought this uh, sheath. And my son walked up to me when I, when I had this on my hit, hip. And he said, hey, what's this? And just ripped it off. He just took it off. He's like, that's really cool. And he snapped the whole thing off of it. He snapped that whole thing off of it. And I told him, I was like, son, you have to, like, you can't just walk up to people and rip stuff off. So the way you have to, like, actually take this off is you have to pull it up and then bring it out. Right? 
but now I have to re-glue this. So there you go. Bummer. So there you go. There's the whole Leatherman thing. Where did you pin these links? Uh, the SOG is pinned on the YouTube chat. And if you guys want to know the uh, Leatherman free P4 driver bit, I can get that for you if you want that. Hot mic. Somebody's dragging meat across a... Uh... Oh, it's Shapeways. I found it. Okay, here we go. we got a hot mic. Stop it. I don't want to hear your mic. Sounds like Pyramid Head. Like oh my god, is that my kids? It sounds like my kids. Yep. Yes, yes, it definitely is, Josh. It sounds like my kids. Leia, are you trying to Blimps. talk to me? Glimps! Oh my god. Yeah, it's... It's yeah. Okay. okay, stop. Can you can you come get the kids from the car? What, what are we doing? Come get the kids. Why? Why? You take them. You have them. Oh, she logged off, so it, it must be serious. Okay, Josh, I'll be right back. Recess is over. Yeah, I'll be mm -hmm. right back. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, turn on the memes. You guys keep talking. I'll be right back. F family first, son. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll, I'll be right back. I'm still waiting for when his son's going to get his license. That kid is... Uh, what's his oldest? Ed is that Ben? That's Ben's his oldest, right? Ben, yeah, I think so. I think yeah. Edison is, the, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure Ben wants to get his ticket. Like, every time mm -hmm. he's, like, he's in there, he is interested. Like, that reminds me of oh, my age. Yeah, did did you see him with the scope the other day? No, I didn't. Yeah, man, he was all well, over that scope, you know, changing knobs and yeah. figuring out what all of the what all the knobs did and everything. And he was yeah. way ahead of Josh. <laughs> yeah, awesome. that was last week's. That was last week's after chat, and then if you watch uh, Adam K six ARK's video today, uh, it's about their camping trip that they did uh, what a month ago now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I I, I think that that uh, was the trip because uh, Josh took Ben on that trip. Like, I think that was a trip yeah. that really got him interested in it. Like, what can you actually do? And oh my god, I mean, I can see his eyes light up every time now. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, and I. Uh, Josh, no okay, stop, stop. All right, we gotta get. I, I, I gotta wrap yeah. up. The kids are. The shackles and are off. I have to. I have to get out of here. Okay. You know, Josh, if, if you got a ticket, then you would have more time now. That's all I'm saying. My wife has left, and so the the children are on my own. Uh, in my own control. But I it's movie time. It is. Yeah, so we got popcorn. We got all the things, but uh uh Mike NAYO, I just wanna I wanna show this to you, buddy. I'm gonna show you there. There it is. There she is. Buddy. Oh the K one. I am so glad you ended up with that. I did. I, I I this is actually like I've been running this I've been running this nonstop pretty much. Like I've been turning it on and I've been oh it's been awesome. Once you go Elcraft, you never go back. Well, I, I already have a KX2. I, I, I don't disagree. I, I, I know, love them. I, know. I love them. I love them. I love them. You have a K1, too, don't you? Uh, no, this is the K1. This is it. That's a K1. No, oh, sorry, a KX1. Uh, I do have a KX1. I use yeah. that much less than my KX2, though. Stop, stop, stop. Sure. Yeah, I, I get that, no. but yeah. but you no, got Elecraft. The K one, the K one was the original aircraft. That was how they made their yes. their sand in the late nineties. Yeah. I remember, I remember the QST articles I, for it. I, I feel like I was, uh, I feel like I have the best like incarnation of this. It is the most bands. I got the noise blanker. I got the internal tuner, and I have a backlit screen. Backlit screen. That was a that was a a kit. That was a kit you had to buy. Backlit screen. And I got it. I got it. And it works. It's great. Super. I love it. I, I, I really wanted to put them side by side with my K2. Oh, Just, man. It, it's, it's, the same, it's the same scheme. 
It's exactly the same scheme. It's just you have more stuff on the sides, like more. Yeah, well, it's, it's hundred wide. Hundred wide does all the modes and everything. All the yeah, it has more modules, but it's the same battleship gray. It's the same mm-hmm. display on the front. Like they're beautiful. They're beautiful rigs. And yeah, they were all through hole. Everything was through hole. There were no like the ICs were sockets. So there was no SMD. So Leia was like super upsetty. She's like, "Why is there a plastic sheet?" on top of the screen and i'm like well because they had to cut a hole and the lcd's right there and she's like well why couldn't they just like have impregnated a a a little plastic bit over the hole and like well because that would have cost like way more money to be able to do that and that's that's why they went that way she's like i don't like it i don't like that it's not aesthetically pleasing and i'm like well okay we we gotta we gotta move on okay bye (laughs) I like I like that she went to that level of detail. Of yeah, it was super it. super ridiculous. Uh, well, I think I'm done. Oh, wait, are you done? Okay, I got a kid here. I'm I'm gonna take. Uh, gosh, how many more? Are we, did we answer everybody? We didn't. I think we did. I think we. I think we yeah. Did we get everybody? I I really. We got don't. most of them. I really hope we answered everybody's questions. That's what I'm really aiming to do every time. What's your question? Your ham radio question? You ain't got a ham radio question in your body. I need to get a license. Oh, yeah, I will. I will. I will cut you. I'm kidding. I will not cut my job. All right. I, I'm going to wrap things up. I'm going to go. I'm going to watch some uh, movies. No. Oh, John oh, should okay, do well, a video on okay, okay. ham radio tools. Okay, I, I will I will entertain my, my oldest here. Ben, what is your ham radio question? Which of you recommends hamstudy.com? It's hamstudy.org. Okay. <laughs> I recommend, recommend it. it. I, recommend I pretty it. much think we all do. Do you recommend yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Really. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, there you go. All I, went of, from, uh, I went from tech to extra in ten days with ham study. He, someone said they went from tech to extra in ten days with hamstudy.org. I'm staying on it. There you go. All right, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Thank you for watching. If you haven't seen the raid, mm-hmm. the raid redemption, you could start there. But the raid two, that's really what you want. Get in there, and we're gonna talk. Mm-hmm. This is well outside. Oh my gosh, we got a super chat. Bye. From TC Fitz. Oh, TC Fitz, thank you so much, man. That's super nice of you. Thank you. That's amazing. And Edison said thank you. So then you get that too. I appreciate that. That means a lot to me, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I hope yeah. you have a great weekend. Hey, John. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Just right at the tail end here. Uh, going back to that one question about all the antennas and everything, yes, you can run an NFED half wave, half of it north south, half of it east west, and get some great contacts. Oh, that's how I have mine set up. I think the question is like, is it is it perfectly elongated that way? See, you know how uh-huh. difficult. I, I, do you know how I difficult haven't... that is to actually scientifically prove what the propagation the propagation pattern is for that configuration. It's oh, almost yeah. impossible. The size of what you would need with the test equipment to go into that. It's crazy. But, Does it know, work? A, yes, of course. A, t- a 10 through 80 infed half wave at 132 feet and some change. Hello. I have Happy it Saturday. set about half and half and it works. Happy Saturday. All right. I got to go. The kids are the kids are out of control. I, we're wrapping it up. Thank you so much, guys. I'm going to wrap it up on the Discord. Bye. 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 Take it easy. 73, Josh. Take care, man. 73, Josh. See ya. All right. Well, I'm sorry we got to head out, but uh, we must head out. We must head out. That's Edison, which is still crazy that Ed Fong, the Ed Fong you know of from the J-Pole, his first name is Edison. Did you know that? Yeah. He's He's an antenna scientist. A scientist of antenna. (laughs) All right. 
I I love y'all. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Uh, please enjoy the memes as we end this live stream. Can we watch some memes? <laughs> no, we can watch ham radio memes. You want to watch ham radio memes? Okay, you got to read them though. They're on the screen. Okay, right over here. Ready? Here we go. Ready? Okay. Maybe. Oh, it's not playing my uh my song. Uh, well, you can just hear us talk as we wrap things up. The European budget bio no. Do you know what that means, Edison? Uh, no. I have no idea. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's a meme though. Do you know what that means? The Breakfast Club, uh, eighty meters, forty meters, thirty meters, twenty meters, ten meters. It is. Like, perfect. Right. I cannot. Did you just buy another radio? Wife radio? It was an accident. I... Okay, there you go. Amateur radio call sign, two by three, one by two. Always be checking out the one by two, right? That's right. Yeah. Yesu and Kenwood at the ICOM. You have no idea what that means. Good? Yes? Radio? Mm hmm. Wait, I... Radio? Wait, I... I've seen that. That's Ian Bob. Hike up a mountain for soda only to realize at the summit that he forgot yeah, to cha know. charge I'm the battery. Sure. The I displacement, involved, the disappointment is monumental. I said that to daddy, but daddy doesn't know who Ian Boggs is. Ian, Ian Boggs? Yeah. Who's Ian Boggs? That was the first thing. That's my favorite. That's literally one of my favorite memes of all time. Remember, kids, electricity will kill you. Dab. <laughs> Hi, I'm your friend, Electricity Stab. <laughs> I'm your friend, Electricity. I'm not actually your friend. I want you to die. <laughs> Daddy. Yes. For a gift? From For your you. gift? What, what, why are you assuming gifts? What is this? Take for my me birthday. somewhere. For your, oh, now it's your birthday. Take okay. I want one of your Take these dogs. wings <laughs> and learn to fly again. What? Learn to be so free. Oh, look at that dog. What? How do I fly? What is also, I want one of those so Star Trek action band? figures. For you, you want a Star Trek birthday. Barbie? Is what, like, my Star Trek Bar Barbie? You want girl. one of my Star Trek Barbies? Yeah, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Uh, you want that? Bed. You want a Barbie? You want a Barbie? <laughs> I'm getting off cheap on this one. Life is fantastic and super drastic. What? I really want. Would you have me? You want a Mister? <laughs> that's a that's a Ken doll that's dressed up as a science officer with some Vulcan God. ears. That's all that is, man. Would you that's your whole gift? Like that's like that's like twenty dollars of plastic, man. Look like that's no that's your whole gift. I'll give you that gift. That's good. We're clear then. We're clear. Yeah. Daily entry. Oh, what is that? <laughs> Give me oh my God! What? That's those are you just tried to rip me off. I didn't. You asked for this. I didn't rip you Daddy, off. I didn't know it was cat. I made the meme. Well, I didn't make them, but live? yeah, we're still live right now. I've been this. watching the memes. Half of the time, it okay. We're done. We're done now. I'm going to go eat. I'm hungry. Good night, everybody. 73. Bye-bye.